Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Friends Per Second podcast. I am Lucy Shames. Joining me, Shillup. Uh, what is it? The con- completionist. completionist. Yep, right. trying to take all your money. And what, oh, what was it? Scamor. 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 That's right. That's right. Uh, you'll notice we are not sadly joined oh. by one Jake Baldino. Yeah. We Devastated. Are very, very sad because we are all here in LA. We went to the Game Awards. Uh, we uh, were going to do a bunch of stuff all together, but sadly, uh, Jake couldn't make it. Well, I mean, he's he in didn't LA. Make it. He's in LA and he's been here for like a few days. Yeah. And then on, just as on the day of the Game Awards, he's like, I have COVID. And we're just like, yeah. oh, Devastated. No. Made the trip out here. Yeah. So he was in his so hotel. Sad. He's in a hotel Very room. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, legitimately devastated. Because we only get to see each other a couple of times a year. Yeah. It's I mean, true. Because mm-hmm. uh, obviously, I'm in Australia. If I was in the States, I reckon we could probably oh, swing be, some stuff. A little, we'd be doing it like, like three or four times a year. We'd be around finish. all the time. Yeah. But I, I flew 22 hours to be here. You know? <laughs> Not really interested in doing that regularly. And so, yeah, they really bummed to know that Jake yeah. isn't here. So, yeah. we so, love you, man. We miss, miss you. Feel better, dude. And feel hope you better. feel better. Hope you get over the COVID fast. Yeah. I don't know what it is. He's boosted. Yeah. So, yeah. and he said that the worst is already behind him. So, yeah. fingers crossed. For those of you wondering who that person was just walked by, that's Jake, our editor. <gasps> you know, come say hi. You, you saw him like Bigfoot, Hello. just kind of. <laughs> walk by again. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's checking the audio. Uh, so, yeah, we're all in person. We were at the Game Awards last night. We're all very tired. Yes. So, yes. Very, yeah, we're all pretty tired. tired but we, had we had to get up early, time. too. We did because we went to Sony Santa Monica today uh, to chat with Eric Williams, the director of God of War Ragnarok. And uh, so we got a great interview with him coming up. Um, And so we're going to be chatting about what it's actually like to go to the Mm, Game Awards. Um, And our, of course, end of year highlights because the holidays, they are coming. Yeah. But we haven't actually introduced him yet. Oh, I introduced him as But, only like, uh, but not Shamor. properly as the replacement for... Shamor. He has made... Shamor? Shamor. 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 Uh, if you watch the first ever episode of Friends Per Second, yes. or you've seen you know, GameSpot on mm-hmm. Giant Bomb on his own Twitch streams, mm-hmm. you'll know the wonderful Tamur Hussein. Yeah. Um, who's joining us. Part-time Jake. Jake. I was part-time <laughs> Gerard Jake? one time. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Podcast yeah. That, that made sense for sure. Jake, yeah. Jake you could easily so swap us out. Uh, yeah. Can you, uh, yeah. sorry, uh, we're going to have to, quota. we're yeah. going to have to redo this because you haven't been speaking in your New York oh, accent. Yeah. So <laughs> we have yeah. already. Uh, well, I can this. only do, I am. <laughs> Something here. Something here. So I'm podcasting here or something like that. That's it, that's um, why did you say like that's, 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 uh, I've no, got that's a pod racing? <laughs> now that's podcasting. Um, I sent. I saw. I felt really bad because I saw. I sent Jake a picture of like a low image of my face, like looking really ugly. With like, can't wait to see you in a few hours. And then a few hours later, he was like. I'm out, man. I'm, like, out. I'm out. I saw that picture. Oh, I've got, and I'm I've done. got COVID. I swear. I was like, oh, no. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we've been in town. Uh, Tam and I've been here since Tuesday. Uh, Ralph, you came Wednesday. in Wednesday. Gerard, you. Live I here. live here. You live here. Um, it was your first Game Awards. Ralph. It was actually. What was it like? Because you've you've done obviously a bunch of E3s sure. and like big game uh, game awards, sure. game events. How did this one compare? I love it. Mm-hmm. I like I love all events because I think it's well you speak to people in the industry and they're like, oh fucking E3. I hate E3. It's the I worst don't thing trust ever. people who hate uh, E3. I have to go and speak to people. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough then. But I like it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and this is kind of well, this wasn't an E3, obviously, because there wasn't anything to play and there was not much work to be done. There was the Samsung Xbox thing in the lobby, which I did get was to there? play. Did you? you did get to I play, did it? play it. How was it? It's pretty impressive, okay, guys. Cool. It's, yeah. Yeah. If you do not have a TV, if you don't have a TV or a console and you want to play Xbox games as mm. if you do have a console, yeah. mm. uh, you can go ahead and play it on the new Samsung TVs. And they announced, I think yesterday, or maybe a couple of days before, that uh, the 2020 and 2021 models of the Samsung yeah. TVs the can now play the Xbox oh, game app. Yeah. So you can, right, sure. you can play games via streaming, and mm. the requirement's only 15 megs down. It's not wow. that bad. It's pretty good. That's very yeah. Good. This podcast is sponsored by Samsung and Xbox. <laughs> Genuine. Oh, that's Genuine. Right. That's that's right. Right. Someone's it's not really. Game. But if you'd like to sponsor a Samsung, please call it. Come on. We're ready. That's Send right. us the TVs. We'll test them. Yeah, totally. we'll, uh, we'll oh, test them right. on the show. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll need to test about 80 inches each for about yeah. that yeah. TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. 80, 80, maybe 95, whatever yeah, you got. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, I mean, yeah, the show I thought was fantastic. Mm. I mean, obviously, we'll get into some more of the details. But uh, I just loved being there. I love seeing people. I love seeing the people that make the games like 
um, I got to meet Miyazaki. Am I allowed to say that? Probably. Yeah, yeah I got to meet Miyazaki. And it's like, wow, this is happening. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. I didn't get to meet Kojima. That was on the bucket list. Um, but just a whole bunch of developers that you, you know, you, s- cool. you see them from afar and then you get to like say hi to them mm-hmm. or, or performers. Like, I actually, I'll tell the story later with Christopher Judge. But like, it's oh, just yeah. like <laughs> cool, cool shit happened and it was exciting. So I had a blast. I had an absolute yeah. blast. I love it. And it's... You- Back open to the public uh, for the first time in a couple of years. As we saw at the end. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, get into that. Oh, my God. But no, it was just really nice. And if you came up to any of us and said that you like Friends for a Second, thank you so much. Yes, that genuinely you. made our nights. It was very, very kind it, of you. It, it was really sweet seeing how many devs came up to us and yes. said they watched FPS. That's, That's also fun. scary because you're like, oh, no. I know. I yeah. actually oh, thought no. about that. I thought about that a lot. Yes. <laughs> That was like, like, a yeah. very scary thought. It, yeah. We're sorry but, in advance. But like they're always pretty cool. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, they get it. I think like um, the the big thing that I like to see is uh, it's a good opportunity for devs to meet each other mm. because yeah. they spend so long in isolation True. outside of a pandemic scenario. But like for between like th- two to five years, often just making their game, their not talking about it, mm. and then you know, chances are you roll into another one. So these are these events are like the first time a mm. dev can speak to another dev and say, hey, I liked your game. Yeah. And like the amount of times I've heard, oh, how did you do this? Or I really like this thing. Or like, hey, here's a business card. We should mm. talk about this X, Y, Z thing. It's really like a good opportunity for um, developers to kind of, you know, just exchange ideas. And yeah. also just to say like they like a thing and get mm. FaceTime with them. And we get, we get to see that as like, onlookers happen and it's mm. it's like it sounds a bit highfalutin but like these awards can ceremonies and these events can be quite humanizing in mm-hmm. a way like totally you, you, you we're so used to developers just being names or like 100%. just being the products they make yeah exactly. on LinkedIn. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And like because we like we we spoke to people who like, we can say up front like we've spoken to people that to for over the years that we haven't liked the games of sure and it's been and they get it. yeah and they're like yeah we get sometimes they're just like yeah we get it why you didn't like it and also we understand it because we kind of knew that but the thing is as well they always are like yeah reading the review text it's very clear that yeah but the amount of, it, just yeah. didn't like it sure. yeah it's yeah very... the amount of people that were like hey we get the score or like we went you know we wanted a higher score but like we read the review and it was mm. justified and mm. it's that it's also humanizing for us in the press and mm. I, I i don't know how much of you guys had it but like you get a good feeling of it's not as antagonistic that it can, as as it can feel you yeah. feel like sometimes you can be like you know it's us, not us versus them but like a call and response almost yeah. like I'm going to put this out there and I hope that the thing that doesn't comes back isn't bad mm. these are opportunities where you can be like hey it's just humans on the other side yeah, and sure. just so remember when you have that moment later on it is a human doing it so like it was, give it I think, I think what makes it worse to kind of add to that is that we all have our own audiences mm. and yeah. so our own audiences either severely agree and support us mm. or throw rocks at us and say you're wrong mm. and then kind of create a a unnecessary hostile environment for us yeah. to the devs. Mm. So if we see something bad about a game that just came out, yeah, I you're like, that's, you that's don't know. True. I, yeah, I think that's true. It's like with Callisto, for example, where I'm like, I was like, I don't think this is a terrible game, mm-hmm. but I don't like it I either. Like it. But mm. I think a lot of that came back to me was very much like, you hated this game, you shat all over this game. And oh, it does, yeah. it, it sort of polarizes your own perspective. Like, or yeah. it, it falsely polarizes or characterizes your perspective into one camp or the other. And mm-hmm. it's not like that. And I think developers, to your point, they get it. Like they yeah. see the they see the gray in, in the air. And as long as you're fair, like they're okay with yeah. it. You know, I had developers come up to me again, yeah, same situation, where they're like, Hey, you reviewed our game. Hey, it didn't go so well, did it? But they're like chill about it. They're fine, yeah. you know. It's also a good opportunity to kind of sometimes a lot of developers or people in the industry can take how your audience behaves or like how yes. your audience mm-hmm. talks and ascribe that as a something that is the same for you sure yeah. so it's a good opportunity like on a site like us it's a bit different but like if you're youtubers or like you like mm. you know if they if a developer is just reading the comments and the comments are the way they are sure like they might think oh this is the this person this comment section or this community is the way it is because of the person that cultivated mm. it whereas you know if they get some facetime with people sure. especially for that it works for us as well where it's like we're mm. a faceless kind sure. of almost mm. so when they speak to us and like, oh your game's for oh extra awesome yeah. you have like a more human conversation but i do think youtube audiences are a reflection of their creators in a large yeah. part but but not one-to-one either like no, there is yeah, exactly. some spill at either end of that spectrum where you, yeah. you yeah. just can't control that you know mm. um 
But anyway, yeah, the point of all this, I guess, is that meeting Des was fun. And it was, was very, really cool to fun. see that and have that FaceTime with them. And um, also performers. I actually, funnily enough, I was just chatting randomly to, to this, this person that I met. And um, I'm like, oh yeah, so what do you do? And she's like, oh, I'm a voice actress. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm. Like, what are you what are you in lately? She's like, oh, I was in Plague Tale Requiem. I'm like, what? Mm. Yep. And it was Charlotte McBurney. And it was like, she was nominated that night mm -hmm. for uh, the award. She didn't, she didn't win, sadly. Um, but I actually had previously in a bunch of other videos, I was like, this person needs to win this award mm -hmm. because her performance is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. and, I, and as I was speaking to her, I learned that she was 16 when she did her fir the, the yeah. first mm -hmm. game. Yeah. And Whoa. so she's like 21 now. And she gave this performance that was, in my view, the best performance of the year in any video game. Mm. And I just randomly chat, like just met her in a bar. Yeah. Like we were standing around in the JW lobby and I'm like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. So, um, yeah, crazy to have those sorts of moments. So, yeah. 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 And the show itself, I mean, I've been, I think this was my fourth game awards. I love the show mm. there's a couple of things like it is obviously even though jeff was like it's gonna be shorter this year <laughs> spoiler alert it was not shorter this year it was still three hours thanks christopher judge <laughs> thank you man no it was a, good, it someone, was a very nice speech. it was a lovely speech. <laughs> it was a very nice but speech. fucking <laughs> someone at valve <laughs> that's right getting that uh, get off the stage user get off yeah. we don't want to give away any more steam decks because if you watched on via Steam, you uh, they were giving away a Steam Deck yeah. every minute. Was that Milf Hunter Milf thing? Hunter Milf, Milf Hunter, Milf Hunter, Hunter go to Steam you, Milf Deck. Hunter. to Milf Hunter. And enjoy your Steam Deck, Milf Hunter. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I thought like pacing wise, I think this is the best the show has ever been. Mm. I feel like they definitely improved the balance. Still, you know, always gonna say it, shouldn't rattle through some yeah. of the categories like that, totally that agree. Kind of, could have done with a few less game reveals and and give more time to yes. the it, folks who worked hard because it I, sucks yeah. like especially if you're a team where you know any team they worked so hard on it and if their category you know they win it they don't even get the they don't get their moment i agree yeah, and yeah. It, and it, it's, i it think sucks. like uh, yeah the, the game i think the game reveals need to be there i think the what the caliber of the game reveals is what needs some refining and it's tricky because ultimately these games are paying to be there right yeah. the reveals are there yeah. and if you're keely and a, a game that's not particularly exciting comes up with enough money to get on the thing sure you're not going to be like no thanks sure but so it's that, a tricky I one think there but were many if any duds with like that company regard. i mean like yeah company yeah, I mean, of company of like, three, but that was like, like sort of relegated to the sort of an ad break was it yeah yeah so it was that was a thing yeah okay yeah so like i if you think about it like try and remember any ads you saw? I mean, the only ads was the vape. They, Don't vape. They're, they're yeah. So there. the thing is, Don't like, there was a Facebook the ads one? were like kind of stealthily positioned sure. as mm -hmm. trailers. So, so there was the yeah. Grubhub skin yeah. oh, by yeah, Wendy's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like the like this B C tier kind of reveals. Dude, the Rocket League Lo-Fi Beats tie-in. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's right. Right. That, that was great. probably the best tie-in we got. Yeah, yeah. And you like Jeff was on this podcast a little while back, right? And he was talking about how it was so it's difficult to find that mm -hmm. balance but mm. it's hard everyone's always going to have their own idea of what works and i think that it, he as lucy said he hit the right pacing mm. this year i mm. think it's just it's again it's hard to do but like i would try and lessen the amount of the like lo low tier reveals to give sure. a little more time mm. to the to the to, especially as like prestige becomes a thing because I mean, yeah when doug bowser was getting played off I was like, yeah that's the kind of like the, you look at no the, one plays off the bow yeah <laughs> you look at the oscars that. and like at least the Oscars give everyone a chance to say yeah. something. There's no one, no one's getting the like. The only time I can remember the Oscars playing someone off is Olivia Coleman, yeah. and she she just went fuck off. No, I yeah. like she was having none of it. Right. So okay, fair I was gonna say the Oscars don't really rattle through things, but they I think they do. They now. do a little but bit. Some of them, yeah. yeah. They but then there's also not. three hours of people getting up on stage. And yeah, taking awards, and also yeah. like movies are a big deal, but like. People spend five years on this stuff. Sure, <laughs> like sure. yeah, yeah well, and, and at the Oscars. There's how many categories? And oh, they definitely okay. have their fair mm -hmm. amount that they don't showcase mm -hmm. yeah. in the show. Yeah. But everyone who is showcased is very like indie game of the year should not be a listicle, you know? And most anticipated I, I game, agree. sure, list it, you know. Sure. Uh best adaptation, like kind of for this year, mm -hmm. yes. Sure. But that's not gonna be every year. Mm -hmm. when next year we have the Mario Brothers movie. Sure. Probably another yeah. season of The Witcher if you wanna Oh, technically like, the, the new Hemsworth, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout so, out to my Aussie brother right there. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think the category kind of determines whether or not it should be yeah. done mm. off camera yeah. or 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm also very sympathetic because I've always been sympathetic to Jeff on with this. Uh, oh, yeah. Because, like, a lot of people are like, the Game Awards fucking sucks and whatever, Jeff Keighley only cares about money. It's like, I look around at that event, I'm like, how much would this cost to put on? Oh, God, yeah. We're talking yeah. about hiring out the entire Microsoft Theatre, the fit out, all the staff that are being hired that night, all everything, right? Dealing just with like, co-streams, dealing with the entire mm-hmm. production team, totally. like PR, marketing. So, that's... like, just to keep the lights on in that production would be so hideous, hideously expensive. Yeah. So I'm like sympathetic to the idea mm. that you need to have this sort of thing. Like you yeah. need to have some shit in there for sure. And there's always going to be us being given feedback to Jeff. Like, oh, Jeff, you should have more of this. And he's going to be like, yeah, fucking, I know, I know. So, I mean, I, I see knows. both yeah. sides. It's you know also I mean? like, uh, people hate on it, but like, I don't care how bad it gets, but like the profile that the Game Awards has, I think is important. And especially if we like, Industries like celebrating um, their kind of creativity on this scale is, is kind of a big part of not legitimizing it, but like having people think of it as a bigger thing, you know, and take it seriously. Yeah. And like, the one thing you have to give Jeff credit for is he's putting in the work to make it. Like, big who time. else? Like, big not time. to be rude, but like, you look at a Dice, you look at a GDC Awards, they pale in comparison. Sure. They have. Mm. They're definitely better to to some degree or the other. Like the Dice Awards are better about giving the developers time to speak. But n- you ask anyone outside of our, you know, our bubble, like, do you know what the Dice Awards are? They don't know. Mm. There's a decent chance you could go to Joe Schmo on the street and be like, "Have you heard of the Game Awards?" Mm. And there's a good chance mm. they do that. And that kind of exposure is. It's kind of a big deal, I think, um, for for the industry yeah. to keep some sort of health coming into it, you know, yeah. sponsors and that. Kind and of. we're definitely far enough away that the Dorito Pope is long behind us, <laughs> yeah, right? Sure. But like, also, long may he live. <laughs> yeah, long forever. may he reign. Forever, yeah, the, Dor- the Dorito Pope walked so that Jeff Keighley eventually would <laughs> get up and run. Exactly so, right. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah. everyone loves to, you know, crap sure. on that, but like, sure. hey. Mm-hmm. At least it's not Schickman anymore, right? How many more times oh. can we see Shit anthropomorphic uh, razor guy, right? Like, <laughs> to be fair, I wish he was there. Like, uh, yeah, I would love to be made a cameo. There is a, you know? a big shaped hole in my heart That's for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. The the other thing is like, and perhaps this is like getting a bit too into the weeds, but like the things that he does, the 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 sponsorships, the agreements, and like the you know the advertising, it's something that pretty much every part of this industry does, mm. like behind the scenes, like. Whether you're a website like IGN, GameSpot, sure. we're, we're also making those kinds of deals. Of like their sales YouTube teams is, making those mm-hmm, deals. Really. Yeah. And like, we don't get that. Kind of, we, I mean, like we might get that kind of Christmas, but we don't get it as hard as we don't have do, uh, people being like, I'm not reading GameSpot because you advertise Pepsi. It's like, that's not <laughs> how it works. We sure. need to do that to keep the lights on. Yeah. I think Jeff gets a lot of shit for it because he does it on a scale that's way bigger and also in front of people mm-hmm. but like the fact of the matter is that's what needs to happen mm. all, at all levels of the industry so like you got to kind of think about it and be like if you're giving him shit for that give your favorite video game website shit fit. but also sure. don't, no, give don't, give shit. Shit. don't give anyone shit don't give anyone no, shit we but don't, like, it's the end of the year yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just recognize that that's a, a necessity and yeah. Yeah. and you can the best you can do is to find a good balance and that's mm. what Jeff seems to be trying to do I mean look I'm not the kind of person that's still playing PUBG I'm not even touching PUBG Mobile, but like if an advertisement is, hey, you can now download the Grubhub car in yeah. PUBG, sure. that's an advertisement that's like, oh, it's Synergy. That yeah. makes yeah, sense to me, yeah. right? Like there was the Dorito chip challenge in Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Like they hid three Doritos inside Fortnite. And if you won one, you got like a big grand prize. Like oh, it's a like really Wonka sort of thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> really, that's like a really cool also, thing to do as opposed to like, yeah. hey, Here's a beer commercial. Here's a show. Also, uh, I just do not vape. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to be rude, but like, who are these people getting mad at adverts? Like, who? I see an advert, and I'm like, <laughs> an, an advert ad. has happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, but people who are like, oh my god, an advert! <laughs> I cannot believe I was forced to watch a Mountain the same Dew people spot who for thirty like, seconds. It's like, what? What's wrong it's, with it's you, the same people who were like, I'm not going to pay five dollars to skip this ad. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, so yeah, have yeah. A premium for sure. YouTube, right? They're ad blocker for days. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Which makes sense. I get it. Yeah, but. Yeah. But overall, I think really amazing show. Uh, oh, we've I got mean, some moments. There were some about. moments, oh, obviously. I when Al Pacino came out at the start. Oh, I, was just I like, thought, yeah, we're in for a ride. I was like, Al immediately. Pacino. I thought he, why? Could have, he could have said nothing yeah. online. I yeah. would have been like, keep going. And as soon as he started reading the teleprompter, I was like, this man cannot read the teleprompter from that distance. Because yeah. I looked at the distance, by the way, because I was, was in the, and it was like properly far, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's properly like, far. <laughs> 
So I was not at all surprised that a man of his age has is having some problems with it. And, and you know that he didn't do a rehearsal. No, no, no. no. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. I am Al Pacino. No, okay. Jeff Keighley's not going to be like, hey, <laughs> Al, right. could you read the teleprompter? Big piece? Al. Right. Can you yeah, pop just down? do whatever you want. You're Al Pacino. That's right. The uh, Dunkachino. <laughs> what is that? The Dunkachino from, from Jack and Jill. That's right. Oh, my buddy God. was texting me. He's like, how much do you think we can get? Al, it'll take Al Pacino to perform <laughs> Dun the Dunkachino dance from Jack and Jill. And I was like, I don't think he remembers that movie. I don't think his no. bones could have withstand <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. But obviously, that, the, the thing about Al Pacino is that I was watching him through Chris Judge's speech. Yeah. It turns out I didn't realize it was an eight minute speech. It was an eight yeah. minute. Oh our, my our, God. Our social team clipped it out oh and my God. Um, just was like, yeah, it's a, I didn't realize it was eight minutes. I, I mean, if we're talking about you know making sure people get the time on stage. Sure. Totally agree. It's eight I think. steam decks, but then yeah. yes, it's eight steam decks. But um, he but powered no. through that get off the stage music. He was like, yeah, he was like, I'm still going, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. his voice is so like yeah. got so much gravitas <laughs> that it sounded like the music was the soundtrack to his speech. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. Like, they kept yeah. raising it. And I was like, this yeah. is only helping him. Yeah. <laughs> You're only giving <laughs> so, him more power. So true. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Funnily enough, I actually I was saying I met him after the show, at like yes. one o'clock or one thirty. We were he I was heading back to my hotel, and I just just walking home, and he was just standing outside because he just put Eric Williams, the director of God of Ragnarok, in a car, and he was just standing outside the hotel, and I'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god and he's just looking at me blankly and i'm like dude i know you just want to be left alone right now but i just have to say i love you so much you did such <laughs> an incredible job congratulations and, blah, blah, blah. and it was actually nice because i met him a bunch of years back in um, norway for god of war one and um he actually remembered me from that which is very kind of him because also i did the interview with Corey in the car yes and he he remembered that as well so it was very very it was like a really nice little thing we just had a quick chat turns out he's a massive golf fan i had no yeah, idea yeah you he's were telling us themed. earlier and i was like He's I'm, like, his whole plan this weekend was just to play golf. And that was it. He's just like, and Eric was telling us during mm -hmm. that while they mm -hmm. were recording, like, and they were doing the motion mm -hmm. capture stuff that he would like try and sneak away to the golf links to play golf, you know? Do wow. I have time? Do so, I have time? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, no, that was one fun. thing during the Al Pacino thing was, uh, I thought was quite funny. Uh, we were ahead slightly. Yes. Um, because we're in person, mm -hmm. so, and then we're, so like our Slack yes. is like going oh, in there. Oh, you were being a so fucking I was being a man the entire time. <laughs> I so was, Al Pacino. I was like, they are gonna kick you. Al, and like, obviously, I'm the managing like... editor, so if I say something, people are like, this is happening. <laughs> so like, the moment he showed up, I like, left it a few seconds, and then Al Pacino was like, and then when it was winding down, I was like, oh my god, Al Pacino is coming to Fortnite, <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> what? And I was like, and then I gave it a second, and then I was like, oh my god, it is Scarface DLC. And you could see people being like, oh my god. Who's, and then like, the process started where they were like, who wants to write this Scarface? And, I was like, and then eventually I was like, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that would be amazing. Then. Please add, please add Al Pacino add to Fortnite. Then, I mean... He'll be there. Eventually. He'll be there eventually. Oh, wow. That's, true. That's I'm, true. I'm ready to mow down children as an opportunity. <laughs> that might be what takes me That's to play right. Fortnite is playing as Scarface. Just playing as Scarface. While yeah. hunting for Doritos, playing yeah. as Al Pacino. Yeah. On the new Unreal 5 engine? Oh, I it looks played it. It looks amazing. I watch videos of it and yeah, it looks too. absurd. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. It's yeah. like crazy, crazy. <clears throat> um, well, other, other key moments, I guess. So for, key moment for you, Michael Madsen. Yeah, I'm like, I love I Michael I didn't Madsen. realize that I... I saw him. He was in our row. Yeah. And oh, I was, was yeah. And I looked at him and I was like, that guy looks why drunk would as he hell. be here? That, guy, why that is the Michael sloppiest Man looking man I've Michael seen. Why would Michael Madsen be here? Michael Madsen is a bit of a mess behind the scenes. He looks like melted ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's in some game now called Rocky. I don't know, but it's it wasn't. Escape it it has, wasn't just him. It was like it has, everyone. Oh, it was All Chuck these Norris. It was um, Danny Trejo. Um, yes, Danny Glover. Uh, Danny was, Glover. Who was in Basic Instinct? Daniel Instincts? Dwyer. Um, the Danny Daniel Dwyer. Michael Dwyer's Douglas and Sharon Stone. <laughs> no, it was, no, it wasn't Sharon Stone. It was someone Sharon Stone esque. Basic, yeah, no. It was Kim Basinger. Kim Basinger. Kim, Kim Basinger's in, uh, yeah. Yeah. She was in the bathroom when this trailer was going up, so I must have missed her reveal. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is wild, and it's from this studio that no one has heard of ever. Mm. We don't know what they've made. Vanilla Ice is in it. Yeah. Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Vanilla That's right. Ice. Oh, now they're making this like weird game with all of the celebrities in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks very payday-ish. Yeah. Yeah, sure. but I we don't know like, if it is I the people. Don't, yeah, it's not the same. It feels like a '90s version of Vice City. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. that's kind of already automatically cool. I do yeah. wonder what that, like, what if the writing is going to be so, like? Who do you 
like everyone's gonna be competing voices wise oh, like sure. it's gonna be so weird mm-hmm. but yeah it's interesting no idea. Mm-hmm. the two guys next to michael madsen were hilarious i felt like they did a great oh, job was like that yeah. irish guy irish. yeah they, they were doing yeah. a great job like hyping him up and yep. like being mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. he just had to slam do a slam dunk and he he chose yeah. not to he just kept being himself but it was very fun yeah. i'm just glad that someone is finally taking you know, a chance at rivaling Smash Brothers because <laughs> this is pretty much any cost that can do it, it's it is this cost. Yeah. Kim Basinger, Kim Basinger versus, versus Michael Madsen. I, I thought you were going to talk about Crash. Oh, no. Crash Rumble? Rumble. Yeah. Crash so wait, Rumble? I actually missed that one entirely. What is, is Crash Rumble? Is, is it just a new Crash game? It's crash a team-based smash. Crash game. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. It's a platform fighter, okay. But no, they, it's not really a platform fighter. It it's feels each. more like Fall Guys ish yeah. oh, okay, yeah, energy. Yeah. We, could, we couldn't really tell, honestly. Yeah. I got yeah. the vibe that it was like a, almost like a Harry Potter Quidditch kind of game where there's like a, like a yeah. basketball hoop with the Wampa fruit and you like slam the Wampa yeah. inside of it. Wait, so that means I mean you vibe? missed Crash rappelling down from the ceiling? Yeah. 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 Oh, what? So, where the actual Crash? Speaking yes. English. In, and then in the, had a in voice. The huge 90s <laughs> outfit. Yeah. Just, Are you guys just making this up? No. no. It's just one of these like I Al Pacino's mean, in Fortnite moments. Yeah, like no. a surfer dude accent where he's like, hey, hey bro. It's oh, me. Like, it's a me. Yeah. Crash Bandicoot voiced by Chris Pratt. Okay, well, I'll look up the clip then, obviously. It's great because he does this as well at one point yeah, yeah. it looks like Will Smith, Will Smith. Doing oh that. right sure. yeah um, sure. what other moments were there that really stuck out to you we'll talk about the moment yes. at the end of this segment and maybe some trailers as well oh some trailers I yeah. mean I was stoked for the Judas trailer yeah Judas uh, Ken Levine uh, Ghost Story Games new one yeah Hades, um, 2. Hades 2, man. Hades yeah. 2. I'm surprised about that, to be honest with you. Yeah. I would have I, I am not surprised at that. That game reckon? that game was an unbelievable success. Oh, of yeah. course. But I so think as them, well... Supergiant loves to... They zig when they zag. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. love to be like, and hey, we're doing this now, and then yep. we're going to yeah. do this. Yeah, but when you do... You zig, then you zag, mm, yeah. and then you make a lot of money, and everyone <laughs> goes, we got to zig, zig again. Yeah. 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 We got to yeah. zig one yeah. more time. Yeah, I look. I think obviously it looks cool, you know, but it, it, but it still it looks like it just obviously looks very. I just want to point out we did zig and zag. No one said zig and zagrius. Oh, <laughs> that is a big missed opportunity. Thank you. This is why you're here, Tampa. Yeah, thank you, thank thank you, you. Tampa. Um, but it looks very <laughs> Hades to the point where I'm like, okay, I guess I have to wait to play that to see how different it is mm. from Hades because it looks kind of just the same. They're like if this is, I don't want to say risking because obviously these are developers that I trust and I'm sure they're going to put a huge amount into it to make it stand out. But definitely as you watch the trailer, you're like, okay, that's Hades again, which I'm relatively mm. okay mm. with, yeah. but also would have kind of been more pumped if they were doing something totally different. I'd be like, yeah. yes, super giant man, they're going to mm. fucking blow us away again, you know? Well, it was so. like, it looked like it was multiple characters, right? Like you could, it's I, unless I'm misremembering. Was, the, the main character is like a witch. Yeah, Do we get maybe. That? Mm-hmm. What, it was yeah, just the one, but I could be wrong. I'm, I'm mis- a, but also, like the the thing that they're doing, like people love that game for its gameplay, but like sure. the characters are what people oh. are after. And like, it, I, I, like I could, mm-hmm. I was watching it. I was like, uh, but gamers are gonna be unbelievably horny. <laughs> like it's yeah. just gonna be insane. True. And like that's kind of like the the secret source of that game that mm-hmm. Hades is like incredible writing and characters mm-hmm. and I don't think Supergiant has done a game that has created a marketing and merchandising machine mm-hmm. the way that yeah. Hades is. and I don't want to boil the fact that a second Hades game exists down to like the first one made a lot of money mm-hmm. because it's a artistically and creatively speaking an incredible uh, achievement but also like it's it's like an indie game an indie studio rarely has uh, the opportunity to turn an indie game into a major blockbuster true, franchise true. and yeah. this is one of the few things where it's like striking gold and you, do, mm. you if you strike gold you take some of that you gold. had to do it again yeah, yeah. Makes it, makes sense. Sense. it does make sense and at least we can it looks like they won't just phone it in mm. they will do something they are the kings of not phoning it in yeah yep. they sure. 110% every game they do which is great yeah, yeah. obviously it's uh, written by a former GameSpot managing editor and mm-hmm. they're really? all top Greg 10 they're really all, yeah. all GameSpot managing editors are, f- uh, are phenomenal writers <laughs> you're, well you're a current GameSpot managing editor you're writing the so. law for your upcoming fight yeah, yeah, right yeah I give him a 10 out of 10 yeah but you're saying all former you no be I like, said all oh all okay I'm sorry I'm missing for clarity he's saying all including himself <laughs> um, no, when we were at Sony Santa Monica, you saw the the Greg Kasavin old. I saw that. Yeah, yeah the statue. We've got yeah. one of those each. Yeah, we, I do. I just have it on my desk. I just yeah. have. It, I it's the old Game of the Year statue. Yeah. It was just a picture of Greg Kasavin <laughs> holding a sign What's where you put GameSpot logo on. on you the put the or game name in yeah. there. No, you put a picture of the game on it, yeah. so like you can take whatever's it's on there. So nice. you print something and put it. Sure. I was actually meant to reach out to Greg and see if he wants one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got, like, a I've bunch got it on my desk just for a little. 
I mean, pep we, talk. When we went to Santa Monica Studios, we got to see all their, their trophy cases. Then we have some B-roll to show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I forgot that G4 used to give away belts. the wrestling belt. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And they had two or three of them in the in the three, case yeah. for, mm-hmm. for God of War. So one and two, I think. Yeah, one it was two, like yeah. back in 2004-ish. Yeah. Which I'm so bummed about because like I that's what I was pushing for mm-hmm. at the end of the year before G4 shut down. Mm-hmm. We 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 had one of our producers had commissioned a belt for us to have for ourselves, mm-hmm. and then immediately our 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 showrunner was like, "We used to give away belts to every game of the year studio," mm-hmm. and so we were in the process of like rolling that ball again. So seeing that, I was like, mm-hmm. "Whoa, that, yeah. that was a really cool thing." Mm-hmm. Whereas Gamespot used to give out. The weirdest gold looking chains, yeah, 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 like, yeah. A medal, gold like, chains. like a medal or something. Chains. It's like something Mr. T would wear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we don't do that. Anymore. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, what are the moments from the show? You reckon the big ones? I mean, in terms of trailers, obviously, I'm not a huge Armored Core fan, but I've actually never played an Armored Core. I don't think. Me I think either. I may have booted it up at one point on a PS2 back in the day, but yeah. I definitely not played it. Uh, and I mean, they're not great. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, some people say, oh, they're incredible. They're so underrated. And then a lot of people yeah. say, yeah, they're not fantastic. It's a mixed bag. Sure. Yeah. sure. I yeah. wonder what this one's going to be like. I actually don't know the, even the fundamentals of what they are. Because I understand Mechs. that they're like, it's mech combat. Mech combat, yeah. yeah. But it's certainly not like soul as in like melee no. focused. <laughs> and that's, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I don't know. And then some, and then I think some people were talking about the idea that it would be like, you know, souls like, but you're wearing a mech and you have to run back to your mech if you're. That's a good mechanic. Uh, I don't know, but like, that just sounds. I don't think it's gonna be that, right? It could be. Like, I, I think like the the most intriguing part of this is like obviously you probably people out there are armored core fans because there's fans of every weird thing mm-hmm. that exists. Sure. But, um, I think like that. It's been many many years since they've put out. A- a core mm. game and it's been even probably longer than since they put out a good one mm. um, and in that time From Software has become From Software yeah. Um, yeah. you know the, the the team that now makes the best games in the business mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people are going <laughs> to Sonic fans like, will disagree once we remove the bots <laughs> Oh, can we just give a shout out to That's Jeff? That's my moment of the... <laughs> Jeff was... He had like a couple of spicy moments some, about... Yeah, what yeah. what do you say He read Chris everything, Judge? man. He, yeah, he, yeah. Knows, he knows what's he up. Said he said about... Chris Judge wants to give away a few Steam decks. Yeah, That's yeah, why he yeah. going. And he's, he's, later on he said, oh, someone, something, something. Oh, I hope it's short. You know? Yeah, yeah, I hope yeah. it's short. Harris. Basically, yeah, like, take yeah. your award and fuck off. And then Animal on stage for like four minutes. Yeah, He's like, I will not compromise on this. Yeah. What I was going to say is not to discredit from software and what they're doing with Armored Core 6 because it's been so long since an Armored Core game has mm-hmm. come out I, I think it would have been a, a a more interesting approach to just call this Armored Core yeah yeah. and yeah, just get, so totally. give it a full mm-hmm. reboot in the sense of like hey there's five other games that no one's ever played those games are I mean not no one's ever played yeah. but like mm. the current media zeitgeist is not yeah. playing sure. right when was yeah. the last Armored Core game that came out Armored Core 5 it's, yeah it's been a long time yeah and yeah. like you said From Software is now From Software so like yeah. you kind of get the, the chance to hit that reset button and set new expectations mm. it feels like now because it's going to be Armored Core 6 like yeah. there is going to be a level of expectation and unless there's going to be Armored Core Remaster 1 through 5 ready to go like people are gonna have to like figure out the best way to get caught up to speed yeah. with this game franchise. Yeah, I think to a degree is to the of that um, is the Armored Core fan base or the legacy and the kind of um, inbuilt uh, awareness and mm. fandom around it is much bigger in Japan than there is here. Yeah. So sure. uh, wh- while an Armored Core reboot makes perfect sense, I wonder. I do think that, or I wonder if some element of it is. In our in certain regions, mm-hmm. six carries more weight than a reboot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also like people have been kind of driving towards we want a new Armored Core in the series as opposed to we want you to reset Armored Core. And there's also like things like hey, if we reset Armored Core, we're creating the expectation that we're completely changing what it is. Yeah, and if they do that, it could go one way. If they don't, and it's rebooted entirely, people are gonna be like, why did you do this? But mm-hmm. I think like. Either way, for for newcomers, I think it would have been good to hit reset. But I think they they make it, making a calculated decision on that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like no one's really 
I don't think anyone has a good idea of what that game could be just because the developer from software they has were, changed. They were being they were, deliberately like they were trying to evoking, stoke some Dark Souls. Yeah, they were evoking yeah. Souls. There's yeah. parts of imagery in that trailer that is out of Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. There's like clearly like they used like Phrase phraseology and terminology mm -hmm. from the Souls games mm -hmm. at times, which is like, what are you guys doing? Sure. You, you guys are doing. And like, I I think like, it sounds really reductive. It sounds really simple. And to some people, might even argue like it's uninteresting. Just apply the Souls formula to to Armored Core. I like, really I would really... be so surprised if they did that. I just because I know they've been making. Like, but I think that would it, be the most surprising thing if yeah. they didn't you look do at a it. creative like a studio that creative, Miyazaki, a person that creative. You make you've been making essentially the same type of game for a long ass time now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess you want to make something else. You know what I mean? Like I just that's a guess. Obviously, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean like they're, they're the kings of making things that are exactly the same that are also innovative somehow. Yeah, like, I'm not saying yeah, that yeah. You, they wouldn't be innovative in what they're oh, doing. Oh no, no. But sure. what I'm saying is like they work within a very specific framework and they figure out a new way to find a, a fresh perspective on that same framework. So sure. I, although I think the fundamentals of, my, my guess is fundamentally it will have the DNA of a Souls game, mm. but it will function in a lot of different ways. The way that fundamentally Sekiro is the DNA of a Souls game, mm. but it plays completely unlike anything else. Yeah, mm. Like I think people are waiting for Sekiro too. I feel like best case scenario scenario we get something akin to the left field or like the very focused gameplay mechanic exploration that Sekiro was on armored core mm -hmm. and i think it might be around like long range uh, gun combat and also maneuverability mm -hmm. um so that because that's the the strength of mechs and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and if they can take those two pillars or something like that and do what they did with sword combat for Sekiro, like, that's going to be special sure but then I'm mm. drinking their flavor aid all over the place. Very so. guzzling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's talk about the uh, the rewards themselves because Elden Ring did obviously walk away with Game of the Year, Game Direction. Um, did anyone art. here feel like Elden Ring did not deserve Game of the Year and it should have been God of War? <laughs> <laughs> you actually, you were, you really, yeah, okay, it, right. uh, I felt like I felt like I could have mixed and matched the awards. Sure. So, mm -hmm. like, I thought as far as. Um, I mean, God of War just resonated so much more with me. Mm. Um, I, I do love Elden Ring a ton, and mm. I put in hundreds and hundreds of hours into the game. But um, I don't know. I I, I think when I, when you look at the whole package of what it is, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot more in, in God of War that just felt very deliberate and specific yeah. and yeah. very pinpointed. And like it was like watching a movie that was like, this is the movie and you can enjoy it. Whereas sure. with Elden Ring, it was kind of like, Hey, the world's your oyster. Go explore, and it's two different flavors. Um, but for me personally, I preferred the more narrative-driven flavor mm -hmm. that God of War was. But at, at the end of the day, like both games are fucking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. it it's almost like they both got A pluses to me. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Are there any games that you thought? I mean, the big one, Vampire Survivors. Vampire Survivors. Were completely Vampire Survivors robbed. Robbed. Game, such a ripoff. Oh terrible. my god, robbed. <laughs> Uh, what won that? What won that one? Uh, that was Stray. Uh, Stray. Was Stray won that one, and then I think Stray also won indie Best game. Indie. Yeah. Yeah. Debut uh, indie and indie. Was yeah. It, uh, who won Art Direction? Uh, Elden, Elden Ring. Ring. Elden Ring. Okay, right. Okay, sure. Yeah, Art Direction. Like that's the thing is that between the w awards that God of War and Elden Ring won, mm. I thought like they all just they both of them deserved those awards, mm -hmm. and you could flip flop mm -hmm. either awards between the two mm. companies and. It'd be the correct answer sure. either way. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I would have given best direction to God of War and Game of the Year to yeah. Elden Ring. I that's yeah, I had the I exact same so. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would have done too. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, it, the, the, every frame of God of War feels so directed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, versus yeah. like obviously um, Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. You're right. It is that sandbox. At the same time, of course, none of that happens by mistake. No. Yeah. You know, all of no, all no. of the boss battles that feel that level of epic. And the sheer number of them, that all of it is deliberate, right? Mm. But it's just you just feel that directorial hand so much more firmly within every part of God of War. Mm. Yeah, and so yeah, I probably agree with that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize Horizon had seven nominations that's, and didn't win a rough, single man. one. That's so that's... rough. They just yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. the so. year that they that Horizon Zero Dawn came out, they won a ton. They I saw did. a tweet from Gene Park. And he's like, the reason that Horizon uh, Forbidden West got no wins is because it low-key sucks. 
<laughs> oh my god, like, Gee, Gee. come on, man, it does not suck. Gene. It's it's good. It it's just it obviously sucks. it was oh like god. it was it was just outclassed it, that year, just as it was it, with Breath of the Wild. It came out. The, it 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 should have come out near the summer. Yeah, yeah I feel like people. Yeah. but no matter when it came out, I still don't not do not think it would have done any better at the game. No, Awards. I no. don't. It's just, I think so too. I think it's just a really cool, fun ass video game. But again, it, as I've said many times before, it's kind of like the avatar of video games. It leaves no culture. Just a very slow zoom on Lucy's face right now. Please. I'm doing the Kermit the Frog. Is this like... when I bring up avatars? She's doing, no, this is when you bring up Horizon. Doing... Oh, right, right. Just, she's can't she's can't doing white people. You hate thin Horizon? Lips. I don't hate it. I just, I find it so... So you're with Jean on this. <laughs> have, you seen, yeah. have you seen white people thin lips? No. <laughs> Where they're like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like the Kermit. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I mean... It just feels so safe. It's so bad. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, I I, like, it's the worst thing. Like, it sounds really damning, but it's so, like, comfortable safe. and so safe. safe that sure. it feels soulless. Yeah. Which is a problem because every part of it is created with love and sure. care. I, I will say, I think it's a beautiful in game. Um, Forbidden West, they did a much better with characters yeah. and, mm. like, actually having side characters that you would care about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that the, party think, by the end was good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think they just got caught like in a year where their competitors were either excelling to a degree sure. that they just didn't reach, mm. or they were innovating in some other way or mm. evolving yeah, I mean, in some uh, yeah, way. It's I mean, just kind of like safe. Going up against Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring, games which are very similar in the fact that they are big open world to rely on discovery in the player mm. to fill with the mm. story, mm. and then they. You know, you're up against Horizon, which is uh, very story driven, mm. and it just doesn't doesn't hit those highs. So, um, I feel bad for the man. I yeah. do. I know. That's it. I do feel bad for them because I, I mean, like them, they're gonna make those games hand are over massively fist. successful. Sure. They got so. DLC they got on DLC the way. way. They'll be yeah. absolutely yeah. fine, People and like Aloy. they're great. Like everyone loves them. So they're working on a multiplayer game right now. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're gonna do that mm -hmm. stuff as well. Hopefully, it's like a Monster Hunter with things. Cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, that makes all the sense. The game looks. Looks good, beautiful. It's fun. It plays so, it, well as well. It plays like, very it, well. The it combat feels good. Is, so everyone, I think it's really underrated. I think the combat yeah. it is like probably the best open world almost, combat outside of like almost every world. problem I had with the first game. I felt was was rectified in, sure. in mm. Forbidden West. The biggest thing for me in Forbidden West was that the uh, Aloy's journey just didn't feel as powerful as it could have been. Mm -hmm. It just kind of felt like we were in the the driver, the pilot seat of everyone all, of all the other characters. Mm. That's not a bad thing by any means, but I agree. Yeah, it definitely yeah. felt like you know, unlike God of War, which you've said and we talked about a lot, is that like God of War Ragnarok is a continuation of mm. God of War 2018, mm. and I don't know if that needed to be the case here with with uh. Uh, Forbidden West, yeah. but I definitely didn't feel like the two really connected as well as I would have wanted them mm, to. Yeah, yeah. I, agree. I agree. Well, yeah. Should we talk about the the, the moment? Oh man! Oh my! Rabbi Bill Clinton. Also, before oh, we move on, oh, yeah. perform Death Stranding two. Oh yeah, Death Stranding two. Oh man! Um, I actually was already kind of like I assumed that was coming because well, he's yeah. done so so much to tease The it, camera but. work also just spoiled that Leia Seydoux was that. Sure. So I was like, well. Why else is Leia <laughs> Seydoux going to be here unless they're yeah. doing... Well, there was rumors that she might be in the new horror game that they're yes. making. All the, well, well, Elle, the, Fal the, the Elle second... Fanning is in Oh, Elle one. Fanning is, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. She's, yeah, so like, there's some weirdness with that. So there was a chance, but yeah. Mm. Death Stranding 2 looks cool. Looks that, fantastic. That, that, I don't know if... Mm, th this is coming from someone who loves Metal Gear Solid, has not played Death Stranding. Really? Ooh, Interesting. I, I'm, Interesting. I'm planning on playing it this coming year cool. because I the might discourse... Be a it's good on Steam Deck. The it's discourse yeah. around Death Stranding play, was so hard for me to ingest it. Yeah. I felt so yeah. poisoned by like reading reviews and seeing people play it because there wasn't anyone in the middle. I just felt very like you either loved this thing or, or, or you were wrong, com. essentially. You loved it <laughs> yeah. or you were wrong. And then eventually you apologized and you're like, actually, this is incredible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so as someone who was in that camp, mm -hmm. I thought the Death Stranding 2 trailer was really long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And not that it's not a slide against Hideo Kojima, who sure. edited that yeah. with his oh, bare so, hands. Yes. No, he, he probably did. Yeah. No, he did. He edited. Yeah, he always does. He always yeah. Does, yeah. yeah. It just felt like I was like, all right, cool. Death Stranding two. Oh, we have more. Oh, okay, cool. Death Stranding two. Oh, there's more. <laughs> like I, it just felt like I. And as someone who doesn't know anything about the games, I'm like, I still yeah. don't know what's going on. Sure. I think, I think, sure. like when you do know the games, it's still like it's got three endings. Yep. That trailer, but you realize, <laughs> oh, they're revealing something that's cool. like, yeah, like it's like, oh, yeah, Return of the King. You know, it ends, and then you're like, oh, there's Sam. 
Mm-hmm. You don't expect him to be back. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it does another big reveal with the whole uh, drawbridges baby. and mm. baby and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it is long, but also like I, th- I think that is going to be a stealth game. Like Ooh. I, I think that they're going to make that closer to what people know Kojima for. Yeah. I feel like they move away from the tumbling down a rocky cliff kind of mm. gameplay a bit more. Because if you rewatch that trailer, mm. she's spending a lot of time like hiding from people, sure. like yeah, the baby. yeah dr- like getting away from like flashlights and torchlights, mm-hmm. and like I feel like the and there is an element of that um, in. In, in the uh, original game mm-hmm. um, so but I feel like they move towards it because now that the title is like both the stick and the hoop or whatever it is like the, the other one was like something similar to that where it was like you're one part of the equation mm. I feel like there's going to be vague Metal Gear Solid vibes to it mm. I mean that would be cool I think it would work because the combat in da- Death Stranding sucked <laughs> like anytime you had to fight it was kind of like this yeah, doesn't let work let me throw my piss at you yeah <laughs> piss bombs and weird like non-lethal whatever so if you just kind of ripped that all out of the game nothing would be lost so mm-hmm. I don't think they would abandon traversal I, I reckon that mechanic it's it's like reviews on it are mixed but I really believe it's fantastic and the ambience and the feeling of like conquering that landscape I think is it's irreplaceable I think mm-hmm. to the franchise but I do think that could replace the combat side of things with hey you've now arrived at your destination trying to do some sneaky boy shit you know mm-hmm. that could work that could work you gotta yeah. sneak those pizzas in that's right I yeah. definitely yeah. noticed uh, in the opening moments of the trailer that was really just a nod on the nose and I liked it is that like the second shot mm-hmm. was like of a, a baby crib and mm-hmm. you saw two handprints and I was yeah. like Death Stranding 2 like I yeah, knew right yeah, away yeah, like, yeah, oh no, that's no, CS2 no. right there as I saw yeah. the handprint yeah. I was like yeah, there it is and then, but it went on for like another mm-hmm. 90 seconds. And then it was like DS2 and everyone popped. And I was like, that's great. Yeah, but I he, know. He told us. And also, yeah. interesting, it says like a decima engine yeah. with support from Horizon. Yeah. Or like it's Gorilla. Like, oh. Yeah, like, yeah they so really they, gave us yeah. Yeah. slam dunk. This is Death Stranding 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about it. Uh, Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you one more time. Just because I'm gonna turn your mic down theme. and then I'm gonna turn it back up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Animal from the Muppets was oh, amazing. It was, it was great. It was amazing. Awesome, Him just going, Melania, <laughs> Melania. I think I don't know if we put it up, but I suggested it in the last like I was like, this story needs to have the headline: Animal from Muppets is horny for Melania. <laughs> yeah, and like people are like I don't know if they've used it. They should have. They definitely yeah. should have. Oh. Like he was if very they didn't, horny for Kotaku Melania. Kotaku would have run that headline. That yeah. feels like a very Kotaku headline. So it'd be like Muppets from or oh, like Animal from Muppets doesn't dress very well. <laughs> We're not waiting into that discourse. Oh, no. So this is the third year we've had the Muppets. Maybe fourth year we've had the Muppets. This yeah. was the first year he's, where he's had where Beaker. He's had Beaker. Animal. He had he had he had Gonzo one year, didn't he? Or yeah. or the no the the, the uh, Swedish Chef. Yeah, Swedish yeah. Chef. He had. Yeah. Then we had the the crab the crab character. I think was one year. Crab. I remember Swedish he, Chef. Yeah, he, he, he has not Kermit, has he? I don't think so. Well, it's no. the ten year extravaganza next year. Has yeah. Better bloody. Sure. At what point do they make a Jeff Keighley Muppet? He's in it. No, he's already <laughs> in. Yeah. Oh, is he? Is I don't he? think he was. He wasn't made a Muppet, but he's in the, uh, yeah, he's, the Muppet. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's like a head in that uh, Netflix show. No yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Um, definitely the best use of the Muppets yet. Yeah. Animal, oh, yeah. It was. It was well written, well performed. Mm-hmm. It. You know, the performer nice. playing Animal knew. Ex- mm-hmm. Like they rehearsed it, obviously, but like, Animal it, Crossing. <laughs> yeah, it just felt very specific, very yeah, well planned out. It, was it wasn't good. like yeah. people going, "What's a Muppet?" Like it so. just felt very respectful to both Muppets and mm. to games. Yeah. Which I thought was great. Yeah, yeah. Jeff loves the Muppets. You can, yeah, you can tell. Like it's every nice. time they're on, they're always they always steal the show. He lights up. He does. <laughs> he he does. looks so happy when they're on <laughs> he stage. Does. Um, yeah. No Paramore though. Did they have to cancel? I thought Paramore was meant to play. Oh, were they meant to be there? Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a, there was an, well, cause we was thought, a tweet. We were excited that Paramore was I love Paramore. Oh, right, sure. Yeah, of course, back in the day. Yeah, yeah right, sure. Um, I love that performance from God did? of War. Was that? Uh, Bear, not Barry McCree. Uh, yeah. Oh, Hosier has a beautiful voice. What a voice, voice. man. Oh, my God. I don't know if that was lip synced or not on the night, but like, if it wasn't Halsey was Halsey fucking, was 100% yeah. sure. Halsey was very the, yeah, the God of War performance was just it was just the song but mm. I love that song and oh, seeing it, it live song. was yeah. incredible yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so. the, the amount of I, I got really weirded out by the amount of people who were like the dude on the on that instrument is so cool and it's like yeah that's Bear McCreary he did <laughs> yeah. the music yeah. Yeah. for the He's whole in the game too. he literally plays himself 
in Play more form in the game mm. playing an exact instrument. It's like fr it's like seeing yeah. the game right there on stage, and mm. people are like, "Invite this guy back to the Game Awards." <laughs> it's like he's a legend. He probably will come back. He flute probably man, will. though. Flute man. Flute oh, man. Pedro. Flute he was such a highlight. Pedro. Flute man. We'll have some. We'll have some B roll playing. Hopefully, of, oh, let's uh, get him on the podcast. Oh, yeah. But for real though, you only saw a fraction of his greatness if you watch that was... stream because I had eyes fixed on the entire time. The shit he was doing, out of control. He oh, was like, ready to jump out of he, his seat. He in the we middle. We need Pedro the flute man, and we need flute man from Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, and yeah, we yeah, need yeah. Flute yeah. Device. One, of, one of the highest uh, trafficking okay. videos on our YouTube channel is the Ghost of Tsushima uh, PlayStation thing, brackets with flute. With flute. With flute. With nice. flute. nice. Yeah, I remember that. I was, I was in that audience that year. Um, that was fun. Yeah. That was a weird year, but it was very fun. Oh, yeah, yeah that was like moving into and they moved you from four rooms. rooms. Yeah, that yeah. Was very odd. A strange one. But um, but yeah, uh, flute man had nothing on uh, Bill Clinton. Oh <laughs> Rabbi my Bill Clinton. God. Reformed Rabbi Bill Clinton. So we were sat in the audience. We weren't sat next to either of you, and we were just like, "Who's that? <laughs> Who's that?" Yeah. So Tam was Tam was getting his phone out, and Tam was like zooming was in zooming on this in. guy. I was like, "What is the relevance of this uh, Who's child?" Who's this young child? <laughs> yep. Because yeah. uh, we'd we'd seen from stuff like walking around, and yeah. we're like, "Okay, I didn't." I don't know this guy kid being there. Sure. He obviously didn't look like anyone. Some people thought he was Sunny from God of War. <laughs> so the guy plays Atreus. And I was like, no. Why would he be up on stage why? right I now? I think and that's then... why his mic got put back up. Right. Because they thought, oh, it's God of War well, kid. Well, they, they were on it. Like, they turned it off yeah. so quickly. For anyone that doesn't know, by the oh, way, just yeah. to explain the situation. God. Miyazaki uh, won, uh, FromSoft won, uh, Game of the Year, Elden Ring, goes up on stage, gives a speech, kind of brief cool he steps away and while he was speaking though there was this kid behind him and everyone was like what the fuck and this kid was kind of rocking and whatever and, like he looked a bit out of place and then mm. as soon as Mizake got up went away he this kid walked up to the mic started speaking mic was off but then they turned it back on and he said oh I want to nominate this yeah. award for orthodox for orthodox <laughs> re 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 reform reform rabbi, reform rabbi Bill Clinton, rabbi Bill Clinton. <laughs> and then that was it then security came out and they took him away and then like moments like like, like literally ha less than half an hour later that Jeff Keighley tweets out the person who interrupted has been in uh, arrested. arrested. I, I would love to see that back. I reckon it was like Miyazaki Keighley seen from Sopranos where someone's getting <laughs> whacked. That kid's getting his ass beat. Well, shout outs to Jeff for handling it like a pro. Because sure. in, yeah, in real they time, didn't make like, a scene. It was just, just very much... He, yeah. he kind of did this, you know, yeah. just like, come on crew, and the crew just went vert. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just was like... Hey, this is the Game Awards. Thank you so much. What a great year. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next sure, year. Yeah. Don't forget about the well the comp yes, the concert next year. Like he he yeah. Yeah, yeah. he controlled it pretty quickly. Yeah. And and while that was happening, no one could see. But like that kid very much got removed very quickly, yeah. and several people got him off stage. But mm. I think he he did the best that he could without the internet sure. exploding as as it did. That kid yeah. has since been identified by Jason Schreier interviewed Into him them, yeah. uh, this morning and. Apparently, this kid is. They thought he was sort of being anti Semitic on stage because he was talking about like reformed rabbi Bill Clinton. But apparently, this kid is Jewish because Jason Schreier asked him a question in Hebrew and the kid understood the answer, uh, understood the question, but then kind of pretended as though he didn't. Mm. And so he got a bit more out of him or whatever. But yeah. this kid is obviously just a prankster who thought it'd be funny to get up there and Ugh, be a dick sucks. and yeah. like kind of not ruin a moment, but just kind of fuck with a moment that, that yeah. you know, this, and, and, uh, it yeah. was very lame. I mean, so. it's gone into the discourse because like. Sure. Yeah. A very real security threat. Totally. That could have yeah, been that could way have been worse. Totally. Um, and that and that per that kid may or may not have paid his way there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. He did buy a ticket. Yeah, oh, he bought so a ticket. Yeah. ticket. And he, he, he said somehow he managed to make sure he was towards the front to execute his plan. How's he done that? I don't know, but that's what he said in his interview. So so, so I was in the middle of of the area and what happened was all of us gave Miyazaki san team a, a standing ovation. Sure. Yeah. And that was the moment where oh, you just he made his chance like right. we because the lights were like pointing over and they were getting up and once everyone stood up you know i saw him in the corner of my eye mm -hmm. and he he wasn't sprinting he just was like just i am the terminator okay. and sure. i'm going to make my goal to get there and then right when he got on stage i was like this this is one That's of those like i moments. spy mm -hmm. paintings like this this <laughs> something here is not right mm -hmm. um but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it will not happen next year. That's for sure. Oh I'm no! Sure there'll oh, be a whole. Oh, there's going to be guards. There'll be security. There's there'll be a rope. Yeah, oh, rehearsals, no. all that stuff. Yeah. They're going to figure it out for sure. All right, we've been going on about the game almost for almost an hour, so I think it. I know. No way. I know. I am. Wow. This is no I'm, way we have. 
I'm hosting, so I'm meant to be keeping us all on time, and I'm not because I'm just having a nice chat with my buds. But <laughs> earlier today, we got up very early because we were up very late yeah. uh, to go to Sony Santa Monica to chat with Eric Williams, director of God of War Ragnarok, and this was very cool for this us. Was I think fantastic. you organized this. Probably I was well, know. obviously, big thanks to Sony. I just yeah. reached out to the Sony people and we're like, I'm like, hey, what's up? And they're like, yeah, that, that sounds great, absolutely. Because yeah. we're originally just going to get him on Zoom or whatever and yep. do it, but then we sort of thought, well, hang on, we're going to be in LA. Mm -hmm. Why don't we time it? And it, so they actually went to Eric went to they the agreed. office that morning for us and a whole bunch of people and set it all up. He and brought us. Donuts. Bought us donuts and none right. of and none oh. of us ate them. I know we were all pretty hungover at that point. Yeah. The idea of having glazed products. No. That point just well, I I just felt bad because he brought them for us, oh, no, and I then didn't know he that. didn't tell us that because I so me and Pat are our, our, our tech guys. We were there first, bright and early, right. and he showed up and he didn't know who I was, right. so he just was like whatever, and he brought the box no. in, and then afterwards, once they were in the room, I was like. Oh, a donut! Like I actively <laughs> grabbed one because sure, oh, sure. one of us. Yeah, well, at least one of yeah. us had one. So that yeah. was really gracious. It was a really of them. fun chat, mm. and surprisingly, we talk very little about the game. But yeah, who, are... who's, whose fault is that, huh? Whose fault is that, Tam? <laughs> listen, what game? What kind listen. of games did we talk about for the what next is, hour? What is there to say about God yeah. of War yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> that has already been We've said it all. We've said it all. Uh, said it all. Uh, I mean, like in our it interview. Was, yeah, in, in, uh, if you want to see an interview about God of War Ragnarok, the game, go to gamespot.com. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. Um, <laughs> speak, can you beep that out, please, Jake? <laughs> yeah. Can you make sure that gets beeped? Yeah, Jake, who works at gamespot.com. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, we had a really great chat with him about just. His leadership style, how he got to where yeah. he is, how, you know, that he, one thing I loved about it is that he just kept calling out the people that he worked with, mm. like by yes. name, everyone's role. Very cool chat. Um, and also, yeah, their office is sick. Your office is very cool. Yeah. So enjoy. Yeah. Hey folks, sorry to interrupt. My name is Jake number two, the editor of this podcast. And before we get any further, I just wanted to give you a heads up that they do touch on some spoilery stuff in this interview. So if you haven't finished God of War, I highly recommend skipping ahead about an hour. If you're on YouTube, you can just check the timestamps below. But anyway, with that, let's get back to the conversation. All right, hello and welcome. We are now here, where are we guys? Sony. Santa, Santa Monica. Santa yeah. Christmas. So, so no, wait, don't. Okay. The Uber ride. <laughs> it was last night. We were at the Game Awards. It was very late and we're all quite hungover. But we're here at Sony Santa Monica Studios, which is just super exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're joined by none other than Eric Williams, who directed God of War Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, cannot thank you enough for your time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was a late night for all of us. And for you to be here in the morning chatting with us, just, yeah, hugely appreciative. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. For the record, I was not hungover. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Also oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not drink, so oh, no, okay. I drove my wife home. <laughs> right, 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 right. But um, no, really, um, really excited to be here, obviously, after such a huge night. A huge night for you and the team. Oh, uh, yeah. How many awards was it in total that you guys hold home? Oh, no, I don't know. I think. I think it was six. Six. Six, six yeah. It's worth pointing out that you don't know because you're quite modest, not because you're like, oh, <laughs> no. I've got so many awards. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, these old things? All the no, it's, no, it's not, it's not yeah, that yeah. at all. Like, I was, you know, I'm super happy for the team. And, yeah. you know, seeing Matt get up there and get the narrative award was awesome. That's, yeah. It's been a long road. And, that was very special. And, and Chris, I mean, that was definitely a, an awesome moment seeing him with Pacino. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Where, where is that going to happen? <laughs> so good. I, I could tell he was looking at the teleprompter and I was like, he's having some trouble with that teleprompter. And it's going to get it. good. Yeah. So that was, um, that was really special. But how are you feeling at this point now with that kind of, with that, that night behind us? Like, yeah, where are you at sort of, yeah, in your in this overall journey of, of Ragnarok? Oh man, I'm just going to start with that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm always kind of like, what's next? So, sure. you know, I'm looking forward to, to what we're going to do next, yeah. which I don't even know. I literally don't know. Right. Like I ask all the time and they're like, we don't know. Just keep doing these interviews. <laughs> mm. sure. Do the things you don't want to do. And then we'll talk about it in the new year. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, you said one thing you want to do, but we won't dwell on that too uh, much. Hey, you, might, you know, might come back to it. we'll, we'll see. Back, you know? It was it, the, seeing the Dead Cells crossover. was awesome. Yeah. I got yeah. hyped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As soon as I saw those two pop up on screen, I was like, dude, I, I'm already in, and then that, yeah, more in. Sure. So yeah, it'd be awesome. So so obviously, um, sorry, I've just got a list of questions here. Um, He's checking I, Twitter. Say again. He's I'm checking Twitter. Twitter. That's yeah. right. See what, I, see what Corey's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was I was actually the question we I sort of had was like, does this feel like does the Game Awards and, and last night does that feel like the end of the journey for you in terms of 
like your relationship to Ragnarok? Because you sort of said like, oh, we're thinking about what's next. But yeah, where? No, I mean the 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 end of the journey was the the rap party that we had with the team. Right. Well, I guess it was a launch party, like slash rap party. You get to see everyone because sure. you know we've been away and work from home for so long yeah. and it's just mm-hmm. getting to see everyone again and everyone was you know big smiles on their faces and, and the reviews were out at that point so we kind of knew where the, the dust had settled and sure. you know you want to be recognized that you know the thing you did for four years was like worth a damn and mm-hmm. i think you know the fans have shown that it was mm-hmm. and you know that was i felt like we were done that night this mm-hmm. is for other people that are interested in those kind of things yeah right yeah, yeah. Cool. and where would you say that this journey began for you personally like as a creative like oh i mean it's day one in the industry yeah. you know like stupid like 23 year old me like moving here from ohio with like 1500 dollars in my bank account sleeping on a floor with a sheet for like two <laughs> years you know what i mean like it was like it was everything i mean the i remember the first day they sat me down at the company i worked at and they were like here we're making this x-men fighting game and i was like oh yeah. this is amazing you know because i didn't know if they were going to do a sequel or not and uh to like Here's Wolverine. Like, that's your first thing to do. Yeah, so. As being a giant comic fan, and you're just like, and it, he, but he doesn't do anything. And then you're in the scripts and you figure all this stuff out, and then you hit the square button and you see Wolverine schnick jab, and you're like, this is it. This is the dream. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what I get to do all day, every day from now on, and they give you money for this. <laughs> um, so that was absolutely amazing. And then, you know, meeting Corey there and a lot of other people like Bruno, <clears throat> it was just, these incredible talents and they're still here at this studio now and we all you know came together to make this so it's like Ragnarok is just like another step in that story of us just making things together and uh yeah it's just really special yeah so So, so one of the things that um we don't get a lot of insight into directors and what they like and stuff you speak to a director or any developer and they're like I don't have time to play games right now because I'm making games. But one of the most refreshing things about the interviews that you've been doing is you've been very open about, I love Castlevania and that kind of stuff. And you mentioned that there with Dead Cells. And when we spoke to you at our office, you know, we learned that you were very into fighting games. You yeah. were like super, like OG fighting game. And that was fascinating to me. Um, can you like, I mean, it's a rare opportunity to talk about your personal history with games itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and also, like, how does any of that inform the game you make? Obviously, there's, it's not easy for people to look at a game like God of War and pick up that you're, like, die-in-a-wall OG, <laughs> like, fighting game, arcade <laughs> kind of person. Yeah. And that's, like, fascinating for people, right? Um, I can tell you. So, for me personally, like, Street Fighter has always been, like, my go-to. You know, like, when anytime I got any extra money, it was, like, run to the mall mm-hmm. you know i'm not even joking because i like ran like cross country and track yeah. and it was like run to the mall it was easy to do and then just go in there and it's air conditioned and it's like i owe a dollar fifty so it's just like how many ass kickings can you hand out on a dollar fifty yeah. right like that's a mentality when you're like 14 and that game is there um and it was just always there you could go the, the arcade was always open yeah. you know was, um so that was always an amazing thing and to translate that into games and the people i met through that like traveling to new york I remember going out there because the Tekken 3 community was really big with some friends from Ohio. We drove all the way out mm-hmm. there and played with them, stayed with some random people that you met on IRC and then fly away to California, start meeting people that were working in games, but they were also all up there, you know, Battle of the Bay back mm-hmm. in the day and all this kind of stuff. And they're still great friends to this day. Like people that I've worked with, I knew before the industry because we were all friends on like, you know, Channel Capcom and like mm-hmm. IRC days and stuff like that. And it it's just been this amazing moment of coming together. But in Street Fighter, I always play Zangief. That's like my favorite character. Yes, yeah. let's yeah. go. And um, <clears throat> Kratos is kind of a grappler. He is. Yeah. There, a uh, little unknown story is in God of War One. His grab is it's based on Zangief's, Zangief's grab. grab yeah. Well, in the code, there's a like when he goes to grab, there's like little spheres that detect yeah. if you're gonna hit. It's like hurt but there's one specifically that turns on that's a really big bubble out in front of him for one frame, right when his arms cross, and we call that the Zangief bubble, and nice. that's. Which vacuumed everybody in to get grabbed. That's why when you push the grab button in that yeah. game, you never miss because yeah. it's this little thing that just says, come here, I got you. Yeah. So, and it was just one example of all those things. And we all played MVC2 at the time. Me and Corey, I remember Corey brought, he got an Astro City from Japan and it smelled like Japanese curry. So, and he was like always <laughs> washing it to make it not smell anymore. Um, and he loved that game and we played and he was like, how do we bring some of this in? So God of War 2, like most of the combat design, he was like, how do we bring this in? I like that. And mm-hmm. 
you know, and uh, me and Derek Daniels and Jason McDonald and Adam Poole and a couple other people like just all knew that game and we're just yeah mm -hmm. just you know borrowing because because your career kind of goes in these like three phases. You're like, you know, imitating, you're emulating, and then you're innovating. And early when you're just starting that, you're imitating a lot of things. Yeah. And then when you start to bring a little bit of yourself into it, you get a little bit of emulation. Yeah. And then as you get deeper. It's just you. So it starts off as like no, none of you. Mm -hmm. It's other people's stuff. Then it's a mix, mm -hmm. and then it's you. So that time, like God of War one and two, for us was us doing a lot of imitating and then learning how to emulate, so we could come yeah. up with our mm -hmm. own ideas. But it was all based on this like fighting game background, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and just like That's so yeah. I guess uh, like the interesting thing was that like a disc or the discourse back then was I mean a lot of it around action games was. The West doesn't really know how to make action games. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was like, look, Japanese yep. people do it. And I remember playing God of War and seeing like it's got juggles, it's got like mm -hmm. air combos, it's got like counters and that kind it's of stuff. It's got infinites, man. Yeah, it's got infinites. <laughs> in it. So it had like pretty much the fundamentals of of a fighting game, right? Mm -hmm. So what was it like to see like in the nascent days you're trying to push it towards that and then having this kind of like uphill struggle was it was it always the objective to be like we want to prove that we can do combat like yeah that? i mean there was a huge chip on our shoulders like when mm, we yeah. saw that because i can't remember where it was it was like a media outlet or something and they said that they're like the west will never be able to compete and we yeah. were like oh <laughs> thank you for the that that's all we heard. needed you know what I mean? <laughs> the so, japanese one no yeah. no it wasn't a japanese outlet it was a, some media but it was you know I can't remember where it was, but yeah. they basically said that. And we were like, okay, duly noted. And Bet. so then it was like, okay, let's try to figure this out. Yeah. And Derek Daniels is my like design yeah. buddy from like way back when. And like we've done so many things together. And, and it was like, you know, the two of us. And and back to the point where he, like one of his like online handles like early days was Excess F Infinite. Yes. You know, because it was like we looked at those games as like they were puzzles. Yeah. Like how do you figure out how to do an infinite Iron Man? How do you, you know, do this with these characters? And uh, James Chen used to run this like uh, FAQ, yeah. and um, you know from yeah. he's yeah, 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 commentator yeah. now, you know, yeah. but yeah. this is how I knew him. Yeah, he's, he's on the <laughs> and yeah, and we'd be sending him like, hey, check out, try this yeah. one. We found this thing with like you know Gambit or whatever, and uh, it it all just grew from that. And we had this huge knowledge. But I re never forget this. Like me and Derek were trying to like get better as design, and there was no like handbook. So we used to go to Borders Books like on Wednesday nights and with the deck of cards and we would just make games with cards yeah. that had like fighting game-esque mechanics. And then one night he was like, you know, we should try to do something to just make sure our memory stays sharp on the history. And we went through every Street Fighter game that Capcom made, mm. like with the m new mechanics that were introduced. Right. You know, so it was like, all right, you got World Warrior and it's like, well, you can fight, you know, like they have combos and stuff like that. And it was like, what was new in CE? And it's like, oh, well, you can play mirror matches now. And yeah. then like, Hyper fighting, it's like faster, but there's new, they start to break Ken and Ryu down. Yeah. And it's like, all right, when supers come online, but we did like a from memory Cal chronologically. Yeah. He still has it on his blog. You can That's go look awesome. at it, like the conversation from that night. And it was just those things because there was no handbook and we just, it was like iron sharpening iron. We just talk about this stuff ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And then the amount of people you're around from the fighting game community, they were just really smart and they were from all different walks of life. People I would never have interacted with in my entire mm -hmm. life, but they come together. Mm -hmm. And you have some, kid from some like inner city that didn't have a lot of money or whatever and you have somebody from mit and you have somebody from halfway around the world all playing this game together yeah. and having a common language and having a good time and still being friends to this day like 20 years later these people are still friends mm -hmm. yeah. and it's amazing what games can do in that way yeah. so, so you mentioned that you had the three phases of mm -hmm. where would you <clears> think the like god of war the reboot and ragnarok fall do you think you're in that innovation phase because i when i played it I think those two games felt more like a fighting game than Ragnarok, especially because then you can like mid air cancel and switch weapons and that kind of stuff. Do you yeah. feel that you got the series, especially with those two games, to the innovative phase, or do you still feel there's more to do around it? Well, I think there's always room to go once yeah. you get there. And I think you don't ever stop borrowing as well. Mm -hmm. It's just how much of it. I think it's like a percentage of slider mm -hmm. where you are. You know, you might be at 50% innovating, maybe 30% emulating, and still 20% yeah. imitating, because you don't, you're still learning things. You don't know everything. Nobody's ever fully formed in that way. So I would say, you know, speaking for Corey, I think he was definitely in the reboot at the place, you know, cause he used to say it all the time. He's like, we're gonna start over because we know the rules so we can break the rules. Mm -hmm. And so that even with the combat, it was like, okay, like maybe we can do that as well, you know, cause the landscape was shifting, you know, like the soul stuff was starting to come in. 
mm-hmm. and it didn't all have to have combo meters and all this stuff anymore like the stuff that was almost arcade influenced yeah. like you could go for a different route and then we were like well how do we carve out our path with inside that and so <clears throat> i think the combat system that took that on but it was a hard change even at the studio uh jason mcdonald our uh, lead combat designer on that game and god of war 3 and he's been here since day one um design director on ragnarok mm-hmm. He had a hard time with it at first. He's like, this close camera. He's like, what are we doing? We know if you just yeah. scooch it back, everything's good. And I was like, but do we want to have a new identity? Do we want to have something that's our own? Mm-hmm. And because we were going to have the range stuff with the projectile, like if you, that pull mm-hmm. is too hard sometimes, that distance. So we wanted it to stay like where you always felt like you're right on a shoulder yeah. in the pocket. And some people still to this day will be like, that's not good. Mm-hmm. But it's that's subjective because a lot of people play it and it, they love it. Sure. So, mm-hmm. and for Kratos being that, you know, hulking, Zangief esque yeah. thing, like that. We never got away from that. We wanted to be in there in the pocket with him, and you feel that crunch. Mm. So, you know, he, he definitely feels like Zangief. But I played him way more as boxer, a hundred percent. Like cause my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he does hit hard like yeah, boxer. <laughs> getting him in the air and then switching to fists, and then just mm-hmm. that was my move, and it's so good. It, it definitely feels the most. He's a like mix a of many game. different yeah. fighting game characters. Sure, like he's got a little Potemkin in him. You know oh, what nice. I mean? Like it's like <laughs> yeah, that we, makes sense. We play everything. I mean, it's. Yeah. I think it's always funny when people are like, just like, you know, like, like, you know, these the kids terms, like they stay in one game or one genre. It's like, why, why would you limit yourself to that? That's like silly, (laughs) like play everything. And like, there's always something good somewhere. (laughs) But if you choose to look for it, if you just look for negative stuff, of course you're gonna find it. And you know, that's all day, every day. But yeah, we we play everything. And we have third, we have third strike cabinet in the, yeah, right over there if you want to play that, afterwards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in your career, would you want to go and make a full-on dedicated fighting game? You know, I, I did that. That was like the first game I did. Sure. And, uh, you know, we made so many mistakes. Anybody out there played that game, I'm so sorry. I wish we would have did better <laughs> Wait, for what you. what was the name of the game? It was X-Men, X-Men? Next, Dimension. Yeah. Next Dimension. It was for okay. PS2. Okay. Um, it It's not great. Right? <laughs> you stretch the imagination. <laughs> But there was only two of us that built like all the characters sure. on the design side. It was me and a guy named Adam Poole. And then we had some help from some other people that came in towards the end. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was, you built a lot and you did a lot. And it was like reps. It was like doing push ups. Mm. It was like you're yeah. cranking through like hundreds of animations, like setting up the hitboxes, all this kind of stuff. And that's what builds you up to get ready to do something like God of War yeah. 1. You need that in your, in your, in your, mm. in your bag, so to speak. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, it's, uh, that game was, like if I can go back in time yeah. and fix that game, sure. oh my goodness! Like knowing then what I know now, I set you on a different. Oh, oh yeah. I know. I'm just saying. No, I would just I would wings. just show up like when oh. like young me would go home, and then I would sneak in and just do all <laughs> the work and all check all it in, and then disappear. So you wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, <laughs> prodigy. Yeah, I'm a prodigy. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's but to do it now, I I think I have too much still joy of playing it and once you get in and you start working on them they, they kind of start to pull a little bit of that away from yeah. you mm. so I, I think I, I'm cool with just letting it be what it is but mm. I'll be honest when I saw Street Fighter 6 I was like damn yeah. missed out again yeah because sure. one of my good buddies Seth Killian you know he worked yeah. on Street Fighter 4 well, and I mean, he's technically in the game yeah yeah <laughs> I mean Seth is, is awesome like that if you've never read his like his old Domination 101 yeah, like it, it's amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah. I guess like it could be the inter- for me, the value in having someone like you, I guess I see more value in having someone like you take the knowledge of fine game, which is extensive enough to make a game, but try and bring that knowledge to a- another genre. <clears throat> so when you like, I love the idea of someone playing God of War and getting the feeling of launching and juggling and then being like, how can I get more of that? And then there's an entire genre waiting. So do you also kind of come at something to be like, I'm trying to sneak in some fighting game stuff to kind of get people hooked on this stuff. As I well. mean, if that's a byproduct, then I mean, that's yeah. amazing. I don't think we intentionally do it because just mm-hmm. landing it to be good for what it's trying to do is so mm-hmm. difficult these days. You know, the it, it's like, you know, you ever see like a like diving, they have that degree of difficulty. Like yeah. games are now like the degree of difficulty just to be at a good place is so high, you know, mm-hmm. to try to take on other things, it's, it's almost impossible. So you kind of have to be like, all right, what are we good at? We're going to do that and then we're going to learn some stuff and add that and then grow it over time. And I think that's where you get to see these evolutions. I think gamers are maybe wanting these big steps all the time and it's just, it's a different time period of making games. Mm -hmm. You know, the hardware's never going to be these big leaps anymore. The games will take more artistic and design oriented directions, but they're not, I don't think they're going to make these, these big leaps. Now I could just be completely off in that regard, or maybe my mind is small and shallow, but um, that's kind of the way I see it. But again, I, I look at it as more of an engineering problem. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and you're just, you know, but it's all the knowledge. If you get the right people together yeah. that have an idea to go run and do that, then it can happen because you have so much kinetic energy of like the, what they've been thinking about doing for mm -hmm. multiple years that it can explode. But then you have to get all the other pieces lined up. You got to get the money yeah. <clears throat> and you got to get the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's happening though. I mean, look at Project L. I mean, the Canons, I've known yeah. those guys forever and yeah. they're putting that squad together with the right backing, with the right IP. And I think they're going to build something special, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, look at Tony uh, yeah. with Multiverse, you yeah. know? Tony yeah. was, mm -hmm. got a word. He was awesome. I loved working with that dude and see him up there last night. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm. So good. I, I wanted to ask, uh, just going back to Ragnarok real quick, the game is filled with so many Easter eggs is like a disservice to say because there's so much history and lore in in the God of War franchise. Every aspect of it is talked about, I feel. Like every time one line, one quip, even the main story it was like, that's from Ghost of Sparta. That's mm -hmm. from Chains of Olympus. Um, how is it for the team to like really kind of pay attention to so many games behind you guys? Because obviously you're innovating and kind of rebooting with, with 2018 and now with Ragnarok. How do you balance that like all right, we're going to make sure that we talk about everything in the mythos of, of Kratos. Well, I don't think we talked about everything, but because um, we, we did probably lose some stuff along the way. Mm -hmm. It was mostly me, to be honest, because I've just been with the franchise mm -hmm. forever. So I And I have a different perspective because I worked with Ready at Dawn on the PSP games as well, mm -hmm. where most of the devs here, they just played them. Yeah. So I have like an intimate history with like what went on how we got there you know why we made these decisions why things changed why maybe someone took it this direction when we thought it was going that direction so for me it was just like hey did you know about this and they're like no that's great let's put that in you know and the writers like would glom onto it so i think just having someone it was almost like a archivist kind of mentality and then making sure we got a little you know for everyone and plus to me it was like giving nods to all the people that came before us like i wouldn't be able to do this without you know, Dave setting it up and Corey running two and Stig, you know, just blowing three out of the water and then Todd coming in, you know, doing the unbelievable job of like making a game and a multiplayer game simultaneously. And then, you know, Rue taking over and building the PSP for the first time that looked just as good as a PS2 mm -hmm. game, which was wild. And then, you know, my boy Dana just with Ghost of Sparta, that was me and him always got along. And it was just having that connection to me and him just running that game was just one of my, the most special experiences I ever had making a game. So mm -hmm having all that in your back pocket and then 2018 you just kind of let's do a little nod here let's do that and then but for fans they see it from almost a different point of view they're like no like you said it's history it's lore mm -hmm. and us it's almost like internal being turned into the art side yeah. and so mm -hmm. it's just a, a weird amalgamation of ideas i think i definitely interpret it as not not a nod but almost like a respect to you know like especially when um when freya is is with kratos in vanaheim and they're talking about demos i'm like i would if you were to tell me that we're going to have a conversation about <laughs> demos right here right now to open up a little more layers to kratos in that moment i i because i love ghost of sparta so i i saw that moment i was like holy crap like we're really going there and it wasn't just like fan service it was like no this is a proper layer to no and it was important is. because it showed that they were the same yeah they they're having the same problems mm -hmm. like one of the the magic parts of the storytelling that matt and rich have put together is you know and all the other writers as well but matt and rich really spearheaded is this idea of like mirrors and clones mm -hmm. and if you look at the game all over the place you'll start to, and sometimes it's a washover effect and it's not till the end where you're like oh that mm -hmm. if, if they would have made these other decisions that character would have ended up that way mm -hmm. and it's almost like cautionary tales and so i think that's why people can really connect on that human level because mm -hmm. they can kind of see themselves in their own decision-making progress or something that they did and they're like, I wish I could have did that over again or I wish this person in my life would have did this or I wish I could have been there for that way. And because you see what the result is now. And um, it's it's one of those I th just magic moments that you can put together. But it, again, like when you can connect the old lore, what we're trying to do now and then fold it into itself where you're like, oh, wow. Like like the spear was like that for us. Yeah. It was like, you know, it's it's him. Yeah. That weapon is him, the embodiment of who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, it wasn't just, like, give him a spear to give him a spear. Yeah. And it was, like, you know, because we could have given him the other weapon that everybody wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just get a lot of heat about that. Yeah. <laughs> all, no, sorry, you go ahead. Not, I was just kind of a follow-on, because I, I, I always love the idea that, like, within studios they have the law book. Like, mm -hmm. do, is that just kind of held within you and, like, other people? Because a, a lot of the team seems to have been around since the early days but is there any kind of official 
And I'm saying this just because the Sonic team was hiring an official like Sonic law person. Bungie's hiring one of those people as well. Yeah. So, and it's, and it, and it, so we have one now. You do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we just we His just name hired is Eric Williams. No, no, no. Uh, uh, we, we hired someone last year, um, and she's taken up the mantle um, in taking all the stuff that I've compiled over the years when I wasn't supposed to. It was you know you're not supposed mm. to take things, and I was like, but I'm like someone's gonna lose this. So I just had a file at home with like all the scripts and revisions, things you're not supposed to have. Mm. Um, but it's a good thing I did because when they came knocking the ass i was like oh yeah i mm -hmm. got that you know even like Corey would write these little short stories sometimes and he was like hey do you have that thing mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah i do he's like dude send that to me you know what mm -hmm. i mean so um but yeah it was one of those where uh we have an official person that does that now and you need to because it's just getting yeah. so big and it's say, it's stretched know. like taffy mm -hmm. and you know and some of the people that were doing it they would leave mm -hmm. and then know some of it and then you'd have to call them they're like at another place and they're like you know, I don't work there anymore. Mm. It's like, yeah, yeah, we but know. But do you remember? But do you remember? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great question. And I think a lot of studios are going to have to do that, um, especially like, I mean, you look at what Naughty Dog's doing and you're mm. moving to a totally different medium. And if you couldn't, you can't just hand them, you know, you, they can't have Neil on speed dial all day long mm. or yeah. Bruce, you know what I mean? Like, so you have to have it ready and packaged and be like, all right, this is where you need the jump off point and then you guys go and do what you're going to do with mm. it. Um, so yeah, that's a great kind, question. Kind of following on from Gerard and Lisa's question, have you had you're obviously like very still close with a lot of people that have worked on the series mm -hmm. on the years and you're now referencing some of that stuff have you had any moments where you speak to like stig and or stig speaks to you and being like you took that thing from the game that i made and you made or like whoever like came not came up with you know the a demos mm -hmm. plotline has anyone from ready at dawn reached out or have you told them like hey we're using demos in this well to give i mean them like some sort of closure and payoff to the stuff that they did not officially like yeah. you're saying like we run into each other obviously like we'll talk about stuff um but uh it's not like yeah because i mean you can't, can't really tell people yeah, either yeah, you have to be yeah. careful you know it's mm. ndas yeah, you, know, you get to know how that stuff works so everybody's working on different things now too which you know i'm super stoked for stig last night yeah seeing jedi survivor mm -hmm. yeah I can't wait so can't good. wait so <laughs> super good like a massive step up it was yeah yeah, yeah. ran into uh, jason de harris who's the combat lead over there you know mm -hmm. and does all that stuff he used to be here on yeah. uh, ascension you know so it's like they're all still friends and to me they're still part of the family mm -hmm. it's just we make different things now we can cheer each other on it's awesome mm -hmm. and you know, I, I want all games to be good. When all games are good, there's, that means there's more gamers. Mm -hmm. That means we're having a, a wider reach. And it means that more people are playing, which gives more opportunities to make even more wild stuff. You know, like like an old buddy of ours, uh, Nate Gary, that runs Annapurna. Mm -hmm. You know, like the fact that he can get Stray made mm -hmm. because he's there. Sure. You know, but he started here as a level designer and got awards too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like in all, like you, you guys love Marvel movies, right? Yeah. Like the visual arts, like head guys are all ex-concept artists from here. Like Charlie yeah. built the, thing over there and then uh andy and uh ryan minerding like they do all that stuff over there all the head of visual development you know so it's like we have this history of like getting good people and then maybe they move on but they're still making stuff that we love and we want to do you know so um yeah this isn't even always a proud question. of people i just i love that you name everyone and you remember <laughs> what they did and i mean you know you could get into the the auto conversation, but I find that's very refreshing. Mm, cool. I think it's very cool. I mean, how, how do you feel about that auto conversation? Because it's one that is currently running concurrent to like properly crediting people within games development, right? Like, because you get people who are coming at different phases and it's a ongoing controversy. And, uh, you know, how's, how do you kind of deal with that? And it's a tricky balance to strike, right? I, I just do me, you know, and mm. whatever other people are going to do, they're going to do them. And I, yeah. you, you know, you can't be mad at it because there's so many different ways to get where you need to be. So if you think you know the one way or you've been doing it as some more righteous version, that's no, like everybody has their own path inside of them and they'll, they'll find their way to do that. And sometimes like, you know, maybe the way that I approach it is, is not good for the next person because mm -hmm. I haven't created a big enough platform. You know, that's something that weighs on me at times because I'm not on social media and this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to, take my path <laughs> and i mean interested to think about like your leadership style and how that might have been different from corey's because obviously you know corey did this reboot and then you sort of took were handed the reins so first of all like how did that feel to be handed that responsibility and then how do you feel or what do you feel you brought as a leader that was different from what he brought and what why did that kind of work as well as it did here in ragnarok um i mean like this is something I want to put to rest because there's some stuff that people were saying, like maybe we were taking shots at Corey. Like, dude, Corey's like my brother. Mm -hmm. Like, we've known each other for over 20 years. You know, like, 
I sent his kid Christmas presents. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is the, <laughs> there's no beef between me and Corey at so, all by any I'm stretch of the imagination. No, I didn't. Yeah, I, 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 I saw some that. stuff online. I was like, what? Are people, well, that was your first. You're on Reddit. Again. People you do. Know. Know. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, the team likes to send me things. <laughs> I, I don't go seeking it out, but yeah. you know. So, like I said, the way that me and Corey always operated was like, he is a true creative. You know, that's the way his brain works, and I am more like, how are we going to get this done? And that's why it works because he'll come to me with some crazy Mm -hmm. problem like hey i want to do a hunt and that's how we're going to kick off the game i'm like okay like do you really want to hunt like are we gonna you know there was a mechanic early on in 2018 on that hunt when you went to the deer and there was like this whole like mini game of like you carving it you can only take so much of the part like you could take the antlers or you could take the meat or whatever and that was part of like the economy system and then every time you killed something in the Mm -hmm. game like a beast or whatever you were like doing this and I was like, this is what you asked for. And he's like, dude, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, okay, so what do you really? He's like, I want the spirit of the hunt. And I was like, oh, so you want to do it through a narrative lens and like it's mm-hmm. teaching and all. And he was like, yeah, yeah, like that. So then it was like, okay, now we're tracking. And I was like, but do we want them to really be mechanics? You know, so that's always the way we've worked. So like me coming to the team, I'm approaching almost all the problems from that point of view. Mm-hmm. And then just remembering in my head, like, oh yeah, yeah. But this has to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And so it was just almost like inverted. So the fact that I had all that experience with him, though, I could always ask myself the question. And then if we ever got in deep water, then I could just phone him. You can just phone a friend. You know, and it was amazing. So, hey, yeah. I, I will make games with Corey forever. Mm. Because he challenges me in a way that I challenge him back. And that's why it's fruitful. So, yeah. What do you think your team would say of you, of your leadership style? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> demanding um very blunt uh, with feedback at times and um i don't know that's the way i look at it because i know i know how i am you know my bar is like here and i'm not going to settle for anything less than that and uh that can be stressful for people Mm -hmm. um but i hope that they see the result and see that it's worth it if you push like to me there's a beauty in the struggle you know like we were talking earlier like i run marathons like you, you shouldn't do that <laughs> it's not fun you know what i mean nobody nobody wants to get up on sunday morning and be like yes what you're gonna do i'm gonna go run for two hours you know um so but that's something about that i've always liked mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. i guess picking up on that kind of passing of the torch i think one thing that people <coughs> don't really think about in development is like when you pass on someone like Corey giving that role to someone else it's not an easy decision to make right and oh, it's not no, a, it's, you are basically like this is my child please take care of it um which is a lot to do and then you clearly what we've seen here is you've got a very deep bond to this franchise do you think about i'm not saying you have to tell us what you're doing next but do you ever think about there will come a day when i will need to stop making God, or being part of god of War? how do you like <laughs> mentally prepare yourself or do you do it every step of the way or are you just like i'm not going to think about it until i cross that bridge Damn, could you ask an easy question? <laughs> um, so I so I have a really interesting setup with this, though, because I only officially worked on God of War 1 and 2 as an employee. Yeah. Then I became a consultant. So I could work on many different things. So even though I got a war, I was also working on, like, Darksiders and Spider-Man and Warhammer, you know, Space Marine and all these different games. Like, So I could almost, like, like mm-hmm. my brain would ping pong around and I didn't feel like I was, like, in a rut. You know, I mean, just doing God of War. So I've had a, a luxurious way of still staying connected, mm-hmm. but also being able to explore and do different things at the same time, which I think has been part of it. Um, but then I look at like, you know, somebody like like Stan Lee, right? It's like, like, are you going to be like sad that you were the guy that made Spider-Man and did that for 60 years? I mean, like, that's the most beloved character of all time, you know, in mm-hmm. most people's opinion. So mm-hmm. I think there's something also powerful about staying somewhere i mean you look at kobe bryant with the lakers like that i don't know if you'll ever see that in the nba again like mm-hmm. somebody that's like just signs up and stays maybe steph yeah, right steph, i think steph. steph's gonna do that too and that's there's a legacy there to that um you know i i love the new york yankees i know that's a, <laughs> a hot take that some people be like boo on him but you know what i like about some of the stuff that they do is like you know there's no names on the back of their jerseys yeah you have to make the number count there mm-hmm. you don't just get I'm on the team and you put my name back there. It's like, no, you're number two. And then if you can make number two amazing over 20 years, then people always remember who number two is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's kind of lost this like loyalty, you know, but 
as you know, number two says, Derek Jeter, it's like lo- loyalty one way is stupidity. So you mm-hmm. also have to, the people you're working with, mm-hmm. you have to trust that they're going to take care of you, that you want to spend all your time with them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Sony's, Sony's been good about that. <clears throat> so mm-hmm. speaking of people you've worked with, who do I have to yell at about designing the Berserker in Alfheim that has the witches in the fight? Because that Berserker <laughs> fight may be one of the hardest things in the game, even further past the Berserker King and Gana. That fight was so difficult. It took me, I think, twenty hours of nonstop back Are to you back. Kidding? Whoa! Give me God of War mode. I went all in and you, I struggled to so beat in, that boss. In Discord, you were like, oh, "I'm not getting God of War. I'm really struggling." And I thought you were just like doing something else. Twenty hours. I got look during Thanksgiving. I went all in. I, I think I put 120 hours to oh playthroughs just to make sure I found everything. And on both playthroughs, that our combat like, team is like just laughing oh, <laughs> they, oh, maniacally right going. now. Yeah, this yeah. is this is what they live yeah. for. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. F- for the record, uh, it's a masterpiece. The game is just so phenomenal. Congratulations! Um, but that one berserker fight, I think, took a few. It, it gave me a lot of gray hairs, uh, and and it made me it made me have to take a step back and think like a game designer and go, all right. Every other Berserker fight in the game is very one-on-one or maybe uh, on a one-on-two capacity. But there's three characters in this arena. Mm. Two of them are flying and mm. teleporting. One's jumping on you at a left field. <laughs> uh, ha- at that point in the game, too, it's it, because the Berserkers are so like, oh, go explore and find them when you want to. <laughs> yes. But this one is such a challenging fight. How do you How do you guys balance that kind of that journey along the way of like, yeah, you can fight the one over here or you can fight the three over here that has the best armor in the game. <laughs> it's like, it's, it was such a, my mind was blown of like, oh crap, I'm not good at this game. So like, how do you, how do you balance that without making the player feel like they're It's very crazy? difficult. I mean, I don't know where to start to answer that question. <laughs> uh, start I, anywhere. You, you can partially blame me for that because i was like oh let's let's do a duo and let's do a trio fight and they're like are you sure and i was like i mean why not you know what could possibly go wrong uh that's what went wrong you had 20 hours uh but uh they they consider the, the those characters like the valkyrie from 2018 and the berserker now like they're they they call them the tests yeah right and so like the, the fights in the game are kind of like pop quizzes. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, did you remember, like, this is how the fire gates work, or this is that you're going to need to do this. But now it's a test. You're going to need to put all those things into action, and we're going to score you, you know. And the score is, you know, you live or die. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, when you get to the, you know, the final, like the king or the queen, Valkyrie, those are the final exam. Mm-hmm. So, like, everything, it does, or they're building you up so when you get there, you don't hit a brick wall. So if you hit a brick wall here, you just know it's going to persist. So if you can't get past this, it's going to be mm-hmm. a long day, right? What you found out. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the way that they pr- approach the design. Now, on the mechanical side, I can't speak to that as much because I'm, I'm a little bit farther removed than I used to be uh, when it comes to that stuff. I try to get my hands in there and they would smack it and say, mm-hmm. go direct something else. <laughs> we got this part now. So, um, but uh, they're, they're very methodical. Like nothing they do is, you know, cheap. It's like it, once you figure it out, you go, oh, yeah. okay, now I get it. You know what I mean? There's some things that, you know, uh, you have to learn. And they, particularly the Berserkers and the Valkyrie and stuff like that, they, like we have a set of frames that make sense for most people to be able to like mm-hmm. pick up on, like timing wise. And they'll put little stutters in those just to throw you off yeah, a little. They- and that's the stuff that usually ruins your day. Or they'll give them the quick thing, you know, some of the shoulder checks or whatever that are like get off me quick things that are like, they're usually right at the, the cusp of like fair. Um, so then, yeah. you know, it just puts you on notice. <laughs> so that's what I'll say about that. If you want more info, we can get you in touch with <laughs> yeah, kind of, me here and I Denny and Rob I, and, uh, you know, who are, back Lauren. The fighting game design stuff. Cause when I f- did that <laughs> stuff, it reminded me of like the fine, it's like Rugal CVS2 set. Yeah. Where it's like almost yeah. like they're reading inputs to a degree almost mm-hmm. and you it, know how do I it's how more do I like when you this? it's more like when you show up at the arcade and you think you're good and then you run yeah, into a buzz and, solve a player yeah, like yeah. you know it's like I used to play with Ed Ma at the time and it's just like you would feel That's like you're like the time. <laughs> like why am I all of a sudden so bad at this game and you're yeah. like no you're not it's just he's that good 
Yeah. And he'll just be like, yeah, I'm just keep doing this till you, you can't figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you figured out that now? Now I'm going to do this other thing. Yeah. And he would, that, that's how he taught. That was awesome. You get so much better playing him because he would just frustrate the shit out of you by just like doing the same thing over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And you're like, all right, figured that out. And then he just go to step two. So you're like, yes, I'm making yeah. progress. And then he starts doing this and then you figure that out and he starts doing this other thing. And then once you get like through his tests, then you have to play yeah, him. Have to play him. Now right. you're playing him yeah. and then you get destroyed all I over had, again. I had the same thing <clears throat> with Justin in the UK. <laughs> he came to play CVS too. And it's one of those moments where it's like, you need something. I love it in a game where it's like humbling. It's mm-hmm. like, do you have what it takes to, you know the mechanics. Do you have what it takes to really mm-hmm. like internalize them? And I played CVS two for years and years thinking I was good. I'd beat everyone. And I went and played Justin and went through his tests and I got through maybe one of them. Mm-hmm. And like like 10 minutes in. And you're like, what like, have I been doing with that? Yeah, life? and then yeah. like I went back and it was like a <laughs> Existential moment Existential crisis. It's, that's where you commit. <laughs> you're like, yeah. do I put in the 20 hours to beat this boss now or do I let it go? And like that's... And that's what's yeah. so rewarding for it like the Souls players idea, as well, yeah. right? Yeah. Like why they're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be better than this. And that's amazing. <clears throat> and other people want to do it where it's like competitive. Like mm-hmm. I... I, I have no interest in being better than a computer, but I do have interest in being better than you. And then again, that's what's great about games because you can have both. Yeah. It's not just like one flavor. And if you don't like that flavor, you're done. It's like, no, you can go find. There's so many out there now. That's what I love. <clears throat> Within that trios fight, the one thing I, I learned about myself was that once I got over that fight, every fight going forward was such a well-earned but easier experience yeah. that like, when I fought Odin, I was like, oh, this is nothing will compare to the trio fight. When I fought the Berserker King, I was like, yeah. nothing will compare to the trio fight. Even when I fought Gnaw, I was like, again, nothing will compare to the trio fight. But at the same time, I, I earned it. And it yeah. felt so rewarding to go, yeah, this this fight was so difficult. But the rest are now such a breeze. Even on Gimme God of War mode, I felt, oh, I've learned so much from that one fight, how to mechanically attack everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now every everything is just a breeze. And I think like... And that's part of the design. Like the main path is you have to do that. So they're never going to be at that peak. They'll have mm-hmm. points that, that are pointy, yeah. if you will. But if you opt into the stuff on the sides, that's a whole new ball game. Like mm-hmm. you're... you're Because you can just leave. Mm-hmm. And if you just want to keep knocking your head against, that's a different story. But it's like on the... You know, while you're telling a, you know, emotional story, you don't want somebody to get bogged down 20 hours. Mm-hmm. That gets... Like it hurts the overall experience and yeah. what you may take mm-hmm. away from it. That's why some people, like, I'm always bummed when they start on Give Me God of War because I'm like, you're not prepared for this. And it mm-hmm. actually makes the game not as enjoyable, but mm-hmm. they wanted it. So we let them go. Yeah. Because we always have an internal argument. Like, should you have to finish normal hard to even get to that? Mm-hmm. But then they're like, well, what if somebody wants to just go out of the gate? I'm like, yeah, yeah but then, mm-hmm. you know, and you'll see that sometimes. They'll be like, oh, it wasn't that good. And I'm like, well, <laughs> the story beats didn't land because you had 18 hours in between them more than most people do. <laughs> yeah, but sure. it is what it is. Like they, that's, yeah. they chose it. They do spent you, their money. <laughs> um, do you, uh, I don't know if we've lost you. Have you played Sekiro? I played Sekiro. So what you just described, it reminds me of that that, that, that key almost unlocking something in your brain. It reminds me of the Genichiro fight. Mm. And mm. I think a lot of the, the oh, same yeah. like principles apply to a lot of the berserkers in this game where you fight one and then you get beaten down and then you figure it out and it feels like a new room opened in your brain. Um, yeah. And I'm, yeah, that's such a fantastic Like, like you said, same thing with fighting games. Like yeah. you'll be like, I, why can't I anti-air this person? Exactly. Right. And you yeah. realize that like you're trying to do dragon punch and all you really need to do is down, down chairs, fierce. right? Yeah. Or jab them because it's close yeah. on proximity yeah. or just, you know, low profile and yeah. just let them go right over your head. You know, it's like once you start to learn those things and the, the terminology and the language around it, it, that's where the beauty of these games come if you dig deep into them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like whenever I see somebody say like, well, this game's shallow where all you do is like dodge and roll. It's like, dude, you're not playing the game. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're, you're choosing to want to do it on your own terms and that's not what it, it's not for you. Mm-hmm. You know, and some stuff even in our game, they're like, oh, it's really shallow. You can just mash on this. It's like, yeah, you can, but there's a whole bunch of stuff you can explore mm-hmm. if you choose to. If you don't do that, that's on you, not on us. Yeah. We give you so many mechanisms, like do all these labors, get all these experience mm-hmm. points, do all, you know, it's like, if you just don't engage, I, I'm at a loss. Mm-hmm. We tried our best. Have you um, have you played Evil West, by the way? I haven't, it's okay. on the list. All oh, right, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna chill on games until the new year. Sure. I'm gonna watch, touch up on a bunch of TV and stuff like that, but that's that's on the list, you know, and then everything I haven't played. Yeah, yeah. cause I feel like yeah. of all, like God of War Combat, I kind of, I see three buckets. I'm like, you sort of got your very slow Dark Souls and you've got your very fast character action and like God of War feels right in the middle where it's like, it's about spectacle, it's about pacing, it's about 
just like feeling like a badass really easily without mm -hmm. necessarily needing to study the game super deeply. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how the industry is going to emulate in the, that in the future. And I played Evil West recently and I was like, well, these guys are just copying that. Like not obviously one-to-one -one copy, but I could feel that inspiration coming through. Yeah. Have you seen as you, across the industry, have you seen any other games that you're like, oh, I think they might've pinched a little bit of that from us. or like, yeah, a little- I don't look at it like that there. because everybody steals from everybody. Sure. It's just, mm -hmm. if you can see it. Right. Right, like I have this like, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, like, like I like to play quote unquote bad games. <laughs> Um, and I'm giving away my whole design philosophy here. I'm outing myself. And cause you're always going to find something good in there. Mm -hmm. And if you borrow from that and then you take it from whatever it was into something that's good, mm -hmm. no one will know where you got it from. Right. But if you go to the best game in the genre and you take, mm -hmm. the parents are going to know like oh, where you yeah. got it from. Then sure. you're just like, I mean, you're, it's a hundred percent imitation. Then, right? We were in the audience yesterday and you know, <clears throat> Of the game awards and there was like three souls likes yeah and we were like yeah hey, Zaki's right there man right there that ethos is actually one you share with alan, alan moore alan moore says the same thing he's like read good books that's true but spend yeah. more time reading yeah. bad books that's yeah. true. because then you can understand why they're bad and take ideas that you can improve on yeah it's yeah. it's just one of those things like it's but it's like the picasso quote right it's like good artists copy great artists steal mm -hmm. but the difference is like to steal means you actually have to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Anybody can copy, that's easy. You know, just like it's blue, mm -hmm. like this, right? But they actually know the exact reason why the brush stroke or that type of blue and how much paint was used yeah. and so on and so forth to make the stroke correct. That's a whole different thing. And that means you have to get into the why. Mm -hmm. And most people only focus on the how. And that's why you see the knockoffs and like things like that. But the why is the most important question. But to answer that, without asking the actual person who did it, mm. that takes like a leap of faith in your head to be like, I th think I exactly know why they did this without ever speaking to them. Mm, That's yeah. a really difficult thing to believe in, right? It's almost like you have to have faith in your own deconstruction of that idea. Mm. Um, but uh, our team seems to be quite quite good at it. <laughs> the Evil West thing is actually like, I described it as the, the fundamental of that combat is built around, you know, when God of War where Kratos activates mm -hmm. and it launches them. And then when you hit punt or attack, he does the Superman punch to punch yeah. them. Mm. It's entirely built around that mechanic and it yeah. works. It's the first time I've seen it outside of God of War where it actually feels like that. But yeah. see, when I look at the game on the surface, I see the perfect marriage between, without playing it, by yeah. the way, just looking at the trailer, stuff like that. They were inspired by us and they're inspired by Doom yeah. and they folded that stuff together. Now, little yeah, little known fact. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. Cowboys and yeah. vampires, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Like if they're, they're making a game that's just fun. Like what's wrong with that? Yeah. But to get back to it is like, so uh, one of the designers down at Doom, this guy, Kurt Lowdy, he's not there anymore, um, but he was fantastic. And we would talk back and forth all the time and we'd see each other at E3 and GDC and stuff like this. And he'd be like, dude, we love what you do. And we were like, we love what you do. And he, they gave his whole talk on this push forward combat. So, mm -hmm. Right? It's one of the best GDC talks you'll ever see. If you're a young yeah. game designer, yeah. developer, watch that talk. Kurt and I forget what the other guy's name is now, but they crushed that. But we had a thing when we added the mobility with the chain and moving around, we called it an enhanced mobility because everybody needed to move. Like, so when you're fighting like, you know, in Vanaheim and the Einhar jumping around and climbing up and down and you're zipping all over the place, it's based on that idea of that talk. Like, how do you take that FPS s structure of moving around and all the chess pieces doing where they need to be mm -hmm. and then bring it into an action game so that you have more different scenarios of fighting. It's not just like, you know, two men in or one man leave kind of like Thunderdome stuff. So it's like we all play off each other. Yeah. Anybody says that you're 100% original and are not, yes, come on. Like, mm. yeah, there's I mean, way too much media in the world. I don't care. Yeah. I, I'll go find it. Here, <laughs> here's a little known thing. There's this, um, see, I'm probably getting, I'm going to start a war on the internet right now. There's this Disney book um, for Fantasia. Do you know what Fantasia is? Oh, yeah. The original oh, yeah. one? Yeah. 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 If you can find this book and you look at it and you take the cover of that book off and you said, oh, this is, this is the art book for the original Legend of Zelda. You'd be like, what? And then you start thinking about it. You're like, oh my gosh, the little dinosaurs that you put the bomb in the mouth, the little mm -hmm. pinwheel ones, yeah. the yeah. dragon at the yeah. end. Yeah. They're all the stuff that's in the original Legend of Zelda. So if anybody over there says that that is not borrowed from Fantasia, I'll bet money <laughs> that that's not true. <laughs> Because right. it's, I looked at it one day and I was like, "This is wild!" Like, there's so much influence, yeah. like the the little centaurs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, we can go on and on. Like, it's like, but that's you know, they probably saw that, and it's yeah. like, think about Miyamoto when he grew up in the time frame. It mm. clicks. Mm. 
Mm. Probably one of the first animated yeah. things that stays in your brain. I mean, it stayed with me forever. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just yeah. saying it's like everybody borrows. I mean, and like Miyazaki, wholesale Berserk. Like, every, oh, yeah. Berserk is the ad- adapted adapted into Miyazaki's games. There's whole yeah. enemies that are from their plot lines, like. Armasets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Armasets. Yeah. No, like I, st- I started reading Berserk earlier this year and I was yeah, just sending just, screen grabs at the time going, is this, that, that, that's is Ludwig the yeah. accursed. <laughs> I, I fought him. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. weird. But, but that's the beauty of it. I mean, we're at a place now. Like, I mean, think about music. has been going through this for forever. Like remix, oh, borrow, you know, yeah. all this interpretation, covers. Like, it's all still good. Mm-hmm. Like, why, why are we all of a sudden, like, it's not allowed in games? So. Like, I don't understand. That's yeah. weird. I think, I think it's a legal thing more than anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like at least a, in music, it makes sense. My name's right. Nario. My brother, Buigi. It's like, <laughs> wait, hold on a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the uh, inspiration then for that shot? Uh, with Kratos. Oh, the, the shot. The shot. With Kratos and Atreus behind him. It's the bear. In, in space. You know, like the tick, it looks like it. You haven't seen the, have you seen the one where it's like. I don't know this game you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about the comic book shot with the yeah. Kratos and the bear. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's what we call that. Comic call book shot. comic book shot. Okay. Yeah, like I was like, this needs to look like a comic book cover yeah. right. from like the 90s. And they were like, okay. <laughs> And then we work with the animator and he kind of like blog posted it out so and he got it and it was like, yeah, it's great. You know, yeah, it's right. one of those things that, again, it's just, that was the inspiration. I, you could see the design document, it literally says like comic book shot. Mm. Like, and that's, we, we talk in shorthand like that all the time, mm. like what we want to do. Sure. Um, and even back to the original, I even think of the Colossus of Rhodes, like design document has stuff like foot through wall. You know, Statue of Liberty stepping on you moment. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. It's like cookie jar moment. Like, and it's like mm-hmm. where he shows up at the beginning and Kratos is fighting those guys and he's shaking the thing. And it's like, he's trying to get in the cookie jar and get Kratos. You know what I mean? It's just silly stuff like that. Yeah. There's a part that got cut from uh, that boss fight at the end when you go inside of its head. Oh, yeah. You when you you know when you jump yeah, out yeah, the yeah. cinematic fires, you were supposed to jump out and be on the shoulder and it was called Street Fighter car moment. And it was just you oh, beating yeah. on the head yeah. and the metal yeah. just yeah. flying off everywhere. Yeah. And we ran out of time, so we had to just cut the cinematic and jumping out. I mean, does that kind <laughs> a shorthand persist through like iterations of the game because I, I imagine it's definitely gonna be there when you're starting a game right um and and you're like figuring the basics of it the fundamentals out but you know in ragnarok for example following 2018 it's 2018, it's 2018 right? <laughs> and um is it still like you have shorthand or do you need to be a little more precise because you know this is a sequel, there's a lot writing on it. Like we gotta make sure that we're not miscommuting it. Miscommuting I think it. I was even worse with the shorthand. Oh, really? Yeah, I was uh-huh. just giving like, like, let's do this, let's do that, you know. Does like, that come from like a, just a, an ethos of just like being free, j- jazzing it or is it just No, like, I think it's more like people will remember it. If you right. give it a little thing, like all the weapons have this, right? you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like the, like the, the phrase for the spear was like, beat the door down. Like everything the spirit did had to feel like you were like kicking in a door or you're like the SWAT team with the big, you know, ram, like knocking a mm-hmm. door down. Like that was, and everybody can get behind that. So whenever they're like, oh, is this right? Like the way I'm killing this guy with the spear is like, does it embody that phrase? Mm-hmm. And it's just like these easy things for people to click and they stay in their brain with so much going on. You know, and you know how you always see those like corporate like messages, like what their mission state, nobody remembers that stuff. Yeah. But if you boil it down to like, like the one I always remember our studio, you know, it's like our story, your journey. Mm-hmm. And that was so powerful because it's us and you, mm-hmm. but together. And so I think you have to break it down in these small phrases. Are, are you know, I mean, you guys deal with media all the time. Like, mm-hmm. Sound bites, everything, right? The yeah, little, yeah. the little quip is you so. Clickbait, it, though, that's kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I clickbait the whole game design. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. even it's even within like human psychology. Like you, you latch onto things that you know. You are taught basically like not stereotypes, but like things like mm-hmm. knowledge and then you use that as a touch point and it's just that's how you yeah you know, i mean stuff. me and my wife like with our marriage you know like i remember the f- little phrase we came up with together and it was like love you love me love us Aww. you know it's like because you can't love yourself you can't love someone else mm-hmm. and you can't love them what you build together mm-hmm. and so you know even if we're getting some kind of like stupid argument or whatever somebody will just drop that it's like all right and yeah. we're good this is dumb why are we doing this let's go get ice cream <laughs> you want bubba yeah you know it's like and so i it's probably just maybe something about me that I like that little phrasing, mm-hmm. but it always works. It's nice. So what's uh, for you? I mean, you said you literally don't know what's next. You have talked about the uh, blue sky design. Hey, Castlevania. The 0.1% chance. That would be chance. fun to make, Konami. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but I mean, do you have any like more specific thoughts about what might come next for you? And I don't know. I mean, wherever they need me on the team, that's where I'll go mm-hmm. to yeah, help but out. But it's definitely this team. I'm sticking. Yeah? Nice. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I want to stay here. I, I would love to finish my career here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, right. 
And do you see, do you see now that the next role for you has to be directorial? It has to be leading, or do you think? Would you like to sort of join in a more junior capacity, supporting others? Like, where would you see? Oh, you get to be a junior designer again? Well, no, Hell when yeah! I say, oh, I mean, super like, into more that. Junior, more junior. <laughs> like, where do you see yourself? In um, this? I don't particularly look at titles that way. Um, like, wherever they need me is where I'll go mm-hmm. to help out. You know, if um, you know, I don't. I don't know right now. I honestly sure. don't. I mean, it's like, I know it probably seems like I'm trying to evade because no, there's no, all these no, secret no, plans. It's, it's like totally fair. Just don't know, and I think it's good like i can get through the finish this year you know like said, yeah. finish up the the media stuff with you guys and uh take a little break over the holidays and then come back fresh and reset and we'll see we'll see where, <laughs> where things go yeah. i guess yeah. kind of follow up that if i don't have a job will you guys hire <laughs> oh, yeah, <absolutely. laughs> you don't want to be a youtuber uh, yeah. <laughs> We can make I'll be this guy game. over here you behind the scenes. I love it. Do you want to make a fighting game? I'm down for making a fighting game. I guess Dive the, kick too? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one hit. <laughs> I guess the follow-up would be, um, as a designer, like, now that you, and a, and a director and that kind of stuff, like, how much, where's the value for you? Do you feel like, because you talked about Castlevania would be cool, and my brain is like, I would love to see Eric do Castlevania. <laughs> but another side of it is like, but I kind of want to see something entirely new mm-hmm. from you. Like, do you, what, Where's the value for you? Do you find like exploring existing opportunities is I th- more? I think enticing? this gets back to your your question about the art tour, right? Like, yeah. I think they have to make something new. It has to be wholly them, and that's fine. And I think there's other people that you're just like, who's really good? That's going to treat this with respect mm-hmm. and and make it good because we haven't had something good from that IP or franchise mm-hmm. for a long time. I think there's value in both those things, and I appreciate you wanting to see what was inside my brain yeah, locked yeah. away it may not be good yeah you know what i mean so it's like uh i've always found enjoyment in helping other people yeah. you know that's why when i was consulting it was just like what do you need me to do mm-hmm. like already done it was awesome i had basically an open door policy they were just like just show up and we'll give you something to do and i'm just swipe a key card show up and they'd be like go fix this today you know it was an yeah. incredible partnership with them yeah. so uh and nobody knew I worked there. I worked there for almost 10 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, people on the team is, who is this guy? Um, nobody knows so, he just keeps turning up. Yeah. Who gave him a key card? Uh, so it, it's really like that for me. Like, I really do believe in that because it's, mm. it, it's not one person. Mm. You know, I have this title, but it, it took so many people to make this game. Mm. So many different groups. Mm. Even outside of our studio, like Valkyrie, yeah. Blue Point, mm. Jetpack. Super Alley, you know, mm-hmm. J- J- Jacobus and his whole crew out in Vegas doing stunts. Like, it it takes so many people to make these games now at that quality. You know, if yeah. you go indie, that's a different thing. But that's mm-hmm. not something I don't want to run a studio or build a company. That's not me. Yeah. You know, that's for other people. Okay, random pop. Sorry. I, I just, just random thing popped into my head. I have this thing where there's certain games where I know there's a specific thing that I can do with it that just makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, in Bloodborne, it's the visceral attack. Mm-hmm. I know you love Symphony of the Night. Like I sometimes turn that on and just do the backdash. Oh yeah, and that gives Should me like, so much joy. Yeah. Do you have anything in a game that you know, like when I do this thing, when I touch this thing, I know it's gonna set off the endorphins in my brain. Yeah, and it's gonna pile driving it. someone. Zangi <laughs> Yeah, it's just you just the heart stopping fear yeah. that they get when they see that hug which one which doesn't which matter the power drives any of them? oh man it doesn't matter what game you've you've been on the receiving end you know what it feels is, like yeah. the one that yeah. gets me but you know what's the complete opposite when you play like a grappler and then somebody just randomly throws you you're yeah. just like so defeated yeah. inside you're like that's my whole job and you just did it to me so, so now <laughs> i must only throw you to finish like yeah. like it's it's that type of thing but yeah you're right like you need those things that just click and feel good you know for some people i'm sure it's like just jumping on a call of duty and just headshot the crap out of people yeah. you know just yeah. like just blow off some steam like it's like we always talk about the weapons like we want them to have this toy aspect to them mm-hmm. with some degree you know and that's the, the triangle button is wholeheartedly embrace that in this game you're just whipping that blade around oh. and just smashing somebody or freezing axe and just blast them or detonating those spears it's just you, could, you don't even have to detonate them. You just do this. Yeah. You oh, just that, feel I, great. I think <laughs> I did this action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did that action more than I needed to. Yeah. Just because I was. I wanted to make sure they all exploded. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. That's so, getting clipped out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it but uh, it, you're right. And that's, what, again, it's, that's the difference between a movie, right? Mm-hmm. You can go watch your favorite scene, see that dialogue drop that just blows you away, all this kind of stuff. Or watch that action sequence. Um, but you don't get to do it. Yeah. So there's the games have that magic, you know, just... 
Wake up DP. Mm, wake up DP all day long. <laughs> Super me, fun. It's, it's, uh, the two hit Seth medium in the air that juggles. Oh, you know, the, the whole, jump strong. Yeah, the jump. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Just, And then into like the uh, tandem me. engine. <laughs> Oh, no I forgot what I'm talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm just like, like yeah, sure, absolutely. Stop. Stop. I am no tap. clue. Yeah, that Juggle. into tandem engine grab. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll just fantastic. turn the game on, do that, and then turn it off. Yeah. I'm good. That, that's what's great about training mode of those fighting games, because I'll do that. I'll literally just go in, and you can just be on buttons. Yeah. Like, when we'd have hard days, uh, when uh, Derek was still here, and we he just messaged me. He's like, dude, buttons. And that means, like, oh, it's... Some didn't go well. That meeting wasn't good. And we would just go in there, like bang on third strike for a little bit or alpha three or super yeah. turbo, which is our favorite game. So, um, you know, play a good five rounds and then just go back to work. Nice. And then like, you know, around seven o'clock, you'd probably get that message again. Buttons. <laughs> it's like, I'll see you. He doesn't even, you, just, you know where to go. You just, yeah. just like a, you know, one of those secret outs. See, we have tea. Tea? tea. Just tea, tea, question mark, and then, and then we'll see you go. in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Most British you got a teacher street fund here. Yeah. I'm not good. I feel like it's too late I, for anyone that didn't no. grow up on a dragon. No, no, it's, it's, it's never too late. late. It's, no. it's never, never too, too late. late. I have yeah. really bad repetitive strain injuries, so, uh, yeah. so I'm going to sit on the bench and I'll... Yeah. I'll, I'll so I got injury. RSI from... Uh, Jeff comes and plays with us at yeah. lunch. He hasn't played in forever. He has a great time. Yeah, I, like from here <laughs> in... Jeff, Eric is the test. I used to be. There's a lot better than me here now. Yeah, I've, I've fallen off in a big... And also, like, from hitting <clears> buttons in the arcades, like, I now have... My wrist is just... See, like, I like that you know that you hit them. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> you I don't like, press buttons. Yeah, you yeah, hit you them. Hit buttons, hit buttons. Yeah. One of my you favorite things buttons. of all time is when you watch, like, you know, you'd be at... Well, this is, this dates me, but when you go back to the old days at Southern Hills Golf Land, oh, yeah. and you see Alex Valle in there uppercut somebody, and it looked like he would just push his fingers through yeah. the machine. Yeah. And then he'd have, like, a little callus here, like, of, like, oh, really? like from, like, rubbing oh, on the yeah. cabinet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was it's awesome. A, it was just, like, well, Valle the best. Yeah, and, like, when you're playing <clears> next to each other, you do that. To, as like almost like a flex like oh yeah a dunk to be yeah. like you yeah don't dunk. do that again <laughs> yeah. and set yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah well one of our uh, animators uh, Sean Gilly big guile players in the oh. community all the time you yeah. know you know, and he would just it's so funny when you play and when you, <laughs> he would jump and you flash kick he would just be like dead in his Tennessee accent don't jump don't <laughs> jump <laughs> yeah. yeah just love it yeah, uh, cool. So many old school guys like that played. Yeah. It's just great. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. Sorry, you getting me geeked out on that. Yeah, <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this fighting game interview with yeah. <laughs> director <laughs> Eric Williams. Uh, no, but seriously, thank you very much yeah, for um, yeah. having us here today. It's really Is that awesome. it? We're done. Yeah. Well, we yeah, it? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's eleven thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, respect the time. Unless there's any other. Who blew the horn? Yeah, gotta ask Corey. Okay, he's not here. I know. The He's final, the final go to panel. Seattle. Final panel in Ragnarok. Final panel? Yeah, in, at the end of Ragnarok when he's oh. looking at the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, did you, what did you think? Uh, I, I, I thought it was kind of like if he wasn't as magnanimous and if he didn't let go of that toxic part of himself, how bad things could have gotten. But that was my that was my read. I don't know. Okay. Mm. That we left that for everybody to have their own yeah. feeling. Right. You know, okay. like there's the one thing that is is that those triptychs were all created by someone else, but that last panel is, you know, yeah. Anger Boda went in, sure. her style. I love that. She sees mm -hmm. what people can really be. There was someone that pointed out, I know it makes perfect sense, like he was like, oh, the the prophecy, um, you look at it and that could be, instead of Kratos on the floor, that could be Odin. And you look mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I, I had a very specific perspective of where I thought this was going. Mm -hmm. And now that I look back on it, maybe I was just wrong the entire time. And then you're like, that's kind of what Kratos just went through. <laughs> like his entire journey was that. Yeah. He had a very, you know, uh, One of the things at the end that I love is when people go, oh man, I really wish I would have went and saved uh, this stuff for Atreus before I, if I knew it was going to go. And that was 100% mm. intentional. Mm. We wanted you to have that feeling of the separation with a child. Like mm. you're like, I, if only I would have spent more time of, I wouldn't have missed out on those so people go through that for real, you know. Yeah. We wanted that to be like felt through the gameplay. <clears throat> I just call my mom when I go. <laughs> <laughs> so Ralph, you interpreted the end as like this is what Kratos could have been or would have been. Yeah, I saw him sort of being sort of it was worshipped. Right? Interesting. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. I sort of saw him standing there being worshipped, and that he probably put himself in that position by refusing to let go of that mm. toxic part of himself, and so he just ended up killing everyone and everything until he arrived at that position. That was my take. Oh, right? see. My, my take, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I interpret it as like that's where Kratos could be. Because yeah, that's whole, yeah, yeah, because yeah, the whole game is the whole franchise is that everyone says he's the god of nothing. 
And yeah. in that moment, he sees that panel and he goes, one day I will be yeah. praised by all these people. And that could be me if I do good things, <sighs> thus giving him the ability to move forward in his journey. And, yeah, and he's also I, at a time when his growth was entirely through the lens or like was facilitated through the lens of his son. So like, I feel like they're I'm perhaps projecting it, but like the insecurity he might feel is now that the boy is not here, will I regress or am I, am I like destined to fall back into who I am? And then he sees this thing that he's been told, these are prophecies and he knows that, oh, if this is where I could be, maybe I can let him go and be who I am mm. and get there. But he's being worshiped. <laughs> but like, and I, I think one of the myth lessons of this, this is exactly what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this I, is I, great. Lead us like a damn fiddle. Bro, like, I just think it presents this idea of godhood not necessarily in, being almost inherently bad. And you know, the idea that there's for, for a variety of reasons. Mm. And so seeing him worshiped means that he is a god in a more traditional sense mm. with all the baggage that comes with that. And therefore I think that that makes him the same as all of the forces that he's fought against all these times. So it's kind of like, that's that's why I think it's a bad thing. Not mm. necessarily like, oh, he's now, wow. do you know what I mean? It's yeah, not like, oh, now I'm a good, gracious God that people love. It's like, well, I'm a God. That means I'm probably an asshole and I probably mm. killed a lot of people to be here. You know I wish I had a top right now and just spin <laughs> it. <laughs> so have you, have you focused, yeah. focused the camera just like Inception? <laughs> you don't know, you don't know what happened? <laughs> so, yeah, but it, no, that's what it's, because it's not written, right? Yeah. That's mm. the whole part of the story. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Like he has, job thank you for yeah. not answering and just yeah, yeah. being like, you guys just do your thing. <laughs> I will say this though, like the what he says when he comes around this eye when they ask him what he saw, that's the key. Mm. Right? Yeah, okay. He says a path. A path, yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. Just because you see it mm. doesn't mean you walk it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> well, um, Thank you again. It's really you. wonderful to meet it's you. Awesome. And really appreciate you having us here today. And congratulations again Thank on you. all the wins last night. And I want to congratulate the team. Yeah, obviously yeah. to all, the whole team. Of course, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, really looking forward to what you and the team do next. Mm. So, Thank you. Cool. Yeah. That's it. All right, that was our interview with the lovely Eric Williams from Sony Santa Monica. Oh, you, nice guy. you know what I just realized? Mm -hmm. I never introduced myself to Eric. Really? Oh, really? I never you said were there hello. First, setting up everything. Yeah. And you never said hello. I, well, because he knew you guys already, and yeah. I shook his hand. And I was so nervous. Oh, right. God, the most approachable dude. I know. I I don't know, man. It's like we were at the JW last night, seeing all these famous developers sure, and celebrities, sure, sure. and the last thing I want to do is be like, "Hi, I'm the completionist. <laughs> I'm like, what you do? You know, like that's what I did to Christopher Judge. I'm like, oh, I love you, man. Oh, yeah. I love you. So hey. much. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, me and Miyazaki. <laughs> it was right. not. Yeah, please. So cool. Anyway, we'll talk about some of the uh, the major game releases that we're going to chat about, like our little highlights of the year. Mm. Not necessarily as in depth as like a top. These are our top ten games of the no year. No game of the game of the years from us. Just no. talking about what we went through this well, year. We enjoyed yeah. this year, but uh, major game releases. So Evil West. Uh, gun grade. That, that is a huge list that I just dumped. By yeah, the way. I was gonna because say maybe mm -hmm. I can. I'll whip through it fast because then because I know go, what's like what shouldn't be on this list. Oh, sorry, oh, stuff sorry. that I just left on there by accident because yeah. this is literally pulled from my new show. Just so you know how the sausage is made around here. But Evil West, did you guys play Evil West? You played Evil I West. I started to play, bit, but yeah. it runs like yeah. crap on Steam Tech. So oh right. I, uh, Okay, interesting. It might, it might. I mean, that was pre-release, so I might okay, have yeah. patched it now. Okay, yeah, I actually played a bit of it on Steam Deck, and I found it ran quite well. But mm. I played it later on. So maybe oh yeah, I'll check the patch. Um, but Evil West surprisingly good. I was, Fun I game? actually loved it. I had a great time with it, hmm. and um, it is basically God of War with cowboys and vampires. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it sold me. The I'm combat a, side of it, at uh, least. I'm gonna go try it out. Um, and it's it's good fun. So it's like a straight up a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next major one is a oh, dark tide. Have you guys played Dark Tide yeah. yet? Yeah. Yeah. Play with, uh, oh, play with cool. Jake. Jake. Uh, yeah, nice. I yeah. Dark Tide. Fun as hell, but it made it. me very motion sick. Yeah. Really. Mm. Yeah. So, but I was playing. I was playing widescreen, and so a bunch of people were like, "Try not widescreen. Do windows." Okay. You know, um, but I'm just. Uh, I'm a sensitive gal. Sure, <laughs> sure, not, absolutely. I don't know. I just get motion sick sometimes. Right, yeah, right, same. Right. And like, even while messing with the FOV and stuff like mm. that, it's like because it's really detailed as a game world. Sure. Yeah. Like, like when you're moving around quickly, it can become a lot, but it's still a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really superb. It's just also kind of really broken and unfinished at this point, which is a real bummer. And everyone was sort of coming from a mile off mm. with Fat Shark. Um, you know, with their previous betas, they were like, well, this is, because I played it back in June mm. and I'm like, well, you know, oh, the, yeah, 
you were very hot. I was like, I was yeah. like, this is awesome, but you know, and there's some problems here, but there's still a long time to it ship, mm-hmm. so no problem, whatever. But then you were getting closer, and it was kind of like, well, it looks like there's still some problems here, and some of them got mm-hmm. worse, and then obviously, yeah, so you, very poor performance, server issues. Yeah, we had issues with content not in the game, and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, we'll add that later, and it's like, mm-hmm. okay, fair enough. Oh, no. So it's a bummer. Um, I'm still gonna be playing through it and hopefully mm-hmm. reviewing it soon. But I'm, I, but look, bottom line, if you like Warhammer, it's like a 40k. It's super cool. Like you just feel like no a, if you want a Left 4 Dead esque experience yes. as well totally because we know shit all yeah. about Warhammer, Warhammer. Yeah. I don't know uh, there was Marvel's Midnight Suns good game uh, you like that I'm really enjoying it cool. don't like the way yep okay good uh, <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> Joss Whedon <laughs> has to answer for his crimes <laughs> It yeah. is many crimes, sure. allegedly. Sure, allegedly. <laughs> um, Cover you're, myself. You're, you're into it. You're into it. Too? Yeah, I love the gameplay. I'm a, I'm the same. Where I think like the writing is largely not not amazing. Like mostly forget. There's like one or two characters that yeah. have moments that are really cool and an arc that is interesting to a degree. But I think the star of the show is the surprisingly mm. card based strategy combat, which is so good. I love is it. unexpected, but it works really well, That's and awesome. it has a. It has a momentum and a, and a dynamism to it that you don't expect from either card-based games or like for access style games because yes. they're very stop-start, they feel like. But they manage to be quite dynamic and always involved because of the uh, environment stuff that mm. you can do, mm-hmm. which I really, really like. But yeah, and also really good translation of characters yes. to abilities and yeah. combat feel. So everyone feels kind of distinct. And it's good. I would be so surprised if we don't see a mobile game like that come up soon, because that format, I reckon they've I really- I mean, Frex is a pretty good porting to mobile. They do. I'm not talking about a port though. I'm yeah. talking about oh, like the, the core of the gameplay that mm. they have developed there, I think is so watertight mm. and so exportable to a phone mm. because of like it's the, the structure mm. of whatever else. I would be really surprised if we don't see more of it mm. because it, it really is that good. So mm. um, yeah, no, that was that was a highlight. Need for Speed Unbound. I'm hearing good things. I played a little bit of it. It's it's fine. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I think like Need for Speed had a period where it was like bad mm. and oh, now yeah. it's in a period where it's like, it's okay. It's Why good. have they... It's sent it to die. Out like to die. it's insane. Like zero marketing. Crazy. Crazy. Yep. The yep. fact that I didn't even know there was a new Need for Speed game when traditionally yeah. a lot, there's yeah. a lot of marketing totally. for it. Had no clue. Yeah, it's like a weird hybrid of like cell shaded and realistic graphics as well, and it never quite uses the cell shaded stuff. Who are you saying is in it? There's like a bunch of ASAP Rocky in is in it for some reason because mm. they always have like some sort of like star in it or something like mm-hmm. that but the story is completely forgettable and like asap rocky is just saying random shit in it but the the driving is still fun mm-hmm. it's got like a, a different style of like nos usage and stuff like that and drifting is fun and that kind of stuff but i think like it's still it's a functional and good racing game it just doesn't have the personality and heart of the old need for speed right. games mm. and until they figured that out i think that this is what the best we're gonna get like sure. a just a middle of the road excuse the pun um <laughs> racing game yeah right fair enough the next big one was callisto protocol so that one we have all played Woo! we have all finished callisto nautical cool. <laughs> uh obviously lots of discourse about that one gerard what did you think I thought it was okay. Okay. I thought it was very, very not safe, but just it it hit a lot of the Dead Space vibes, and then it it didn't go further beyond that. Mm-hmm. It kind of felt like it just kind of did what it needed to do and got out. Um, you know, uh, I like most of us broke my back trying to get a video out on time, and I failed by a couple days thanks to the YouTube algorithms. But uh, yeah, it was it was a uh, I was disappointed because I I wanted more. It's not that the game was bad. It's not that the game was great. I just wanted it to be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's just me putting unrealistic expectations on it. But I I don't know. I I, I wanted just a little bit more from it. Um, The punch-out combat was fun for a while until it wasn't. Um, Some of the dodging mechanics were great until it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It, 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 It felt like there was a lot of... A great blueprint that was ready for us for a future franchise. And, I mean, in the ending, even, it's like... Hey, there will be a second one probably. It's mm. very much like seeing the next one. I, feel, I think it'll still sell regardless yeah. oh, of the Oh, like, it's it's yeah. There's so I, much excitement for it for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just I just feel bad because I wanted to love it. Mm. Yeah. And the, the the I never seen before, at least in recent years in my eyes, seeing the general audience turn on on content creators and and uh, reviewers so quickly mm. just from like <laughs> 
Oh, I, I've seen plenty of that. I've seen <laughs> things you people wouldn't believe. Yeah. It, it was like seeing it in real time. It yeah. was that was scary. I was like, my video is gonna be like this, and then I saw everyone. I was like, oh no, that's gonna be me in no. a couple of days. <laughs> my, no, mine was like I tweeted. I didn't enjoy the game. Sure. My tweets were fairly innocuous. They were just like, I thought the combat was bizarre and unwieldy. Didn't yeah. care for it. It's because you weren't playing it like Devil May Cry. That's the yeah, problem. And then so. people were like, oh, she's so terrible at games. Yeah. Oh, she fucking hates it. She's uh, but the, biased. And I was the like, game hadn't even been out for more come, than an yeah. hour. Yeah. Hadn't even come out yet. It hadn't been that, out yet. That never matters. That no, never matters. matters. Yeah. But, I've learned yeah. that long ago. So. Um, but no, also... Any, the thing, I think I fucked myself over because I played Dead Space over Thanksgiving. Right, right, right. And so right. I was like, oh yeah, this is it, this is it. This, this is what we're getting, but it's gonna be all shiny and nice. Yeah, yeah, getting it in uh, March. Um, but <laughs> is it, no, is it March? It's been bumped to March? I no, it was uh, it, no it's, oh, sorry, it's that's January, Resident Evil's March. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, sure. And I was playing it and I was like, any tension hmm. was completely ruined by the fact that the game stuttered so yeah. badly that every time a scare was coming i would know because the frame rate <laughs> would just go Ugh. let me ask you this do you guys think okay I, i'm pretty sure we all agree that game was not scary right no it was not scary why was it not scary like what what would you think is was missing in that equation to make it not scary Gerard. in my opinion <laughs> in my opinion combat forces you to fight every single thing in front of you mm -hmm. yeah. Which means that you are looking at all of these gross monsters all the time. Mm -hmm. Which means the element of surprise of being scared is very limited. Mm -hmm. And those moments you do get scared is the traditional jump scare, mm -hmm. QTE, story narrative driven moments. Which is great. Those moments got me for sure. But anytime a combat scenario happened, in my mind it was like the Final Fantasy dun 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 yeah. dun 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 Like, alright, I know what I have to do. Got my mm -hmm. baton. I'm going to beat the crap out of everyone. Mm -hmm. Combat over. Da -da 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 Moving on to the next scene. Sure. So I feel like because we were in their faces so often, mm -hmm. we were kind of desensitized to what these beings were. And of course, the, the death animations were so gruesome and mm. over the top. For the first time. For the first time, for the yeah. third time, for the 18th time. Mm -hmm. But like then you start to see, oh, seeing it so often, it's not that not that scary as it used to be. Mm. Yeah, I think like I'm I'm a little more bullish on being unequivocal about my opinions about Death Space not Death Space about Callisto I think it's a bad game okay. and like over time I've thought more and more about it and I started off thinking oh, it's fine and then I was like I, I, now I'm at the point where the more I think about it the more I think it's a bad game but I don't think that it's the fault of the developers I feel like there was mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that they clearly were trying to do and then they undermine it immediately. And mm. the stuff that Gerard just said is definitely it. It doesn't set up tension very well at no. all. Yeah. It doesn't do the build yeah. and release very well at all. Mm. It doesn't have a variety of enemies mm. that you are, there's like nothing in there that shocks you for the first time that you see it. But also the, every encounter with every enemy feels unfair. Yeah. Because and the some thing of is, them yeah. are deliberately designed to be unfair. The one-on-one -on -one encounters are functional mm. the first time you do it it's I kind agree. of like okay i see this as like a bit of weight to it mm. it feels kind of and then you do those again ad nauseum for like a few mm. hours and then the game has nothing left mm. so it's just like a lot of these mm. and every aspect of the game breaks down mm. but beyond that environments are largely forgettable or mm. samey um there's no it doesn't have a gimmick which mm. i don't think it needs a gimmick but there was nothing like no plasma cutter. No, yeah, no plasma cutter. There's no moment where you go out into yeah, zero G space oh, and zero like G's, you don't yeah. have yeah. like that. Well, there's yeah. no puzzle solving. There's no yeah. puzzles. Yeah. You got the key card. Well, I mean, they kind of tried it with the fuses, but, like, just but that was yeah, just that was like, like one again. puzzle ten times over. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, like, and the thing I have is like, a lot of people are letting it slide way further than it deserves because mm. it looks really nice. And it, it look definitely nice. looks really nice. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. It is a beautiful game. Lucy's favorite part is... The teeth. The teeth. She loves teeth. <laughs> they look um, so good. Uh, and actually, I felt bad because I tweeted that out and someone was like, oh, you're damning with faint praise there. And I was like, did not mean to. That was a genuine compliment. And then the, the person who did the facial scanning like found my tweet and was yeah. like... Thank you so much. Really? It really means a lot. Like we right. tried really hard on that. And I was like, <laughs> well, if that compliment went to that to the right person, I'm good. glad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it looks really nice, and I it just I stand back for, from it, and I feel like it's it feels like a lot of underbaked ideas, mm -hmm. and like, and also that 
the combat style, face to face, up close, yeah. it just doesn't work for that kind of mm -hmm. so, like the, look at every game that is in its style. Mm. And the thing that you're trying to do is create space and move away from enemies as much as possible. And I appreciate that they went for this, but like you fail once, death is the end of the loop when it comes to building and release of tension. Mm. And if you're repeatedly dying, all it takes is one encounter and you stop engaging with that game as if it's a thing that you you feel jeopardy in. Because yeah. you're like, oh, I'm just gonna come back and be frustrated again. And also instantaneous loading times, because you're basically back in it straight away as yeah. soon as you press a button. I mean, that also, like, you cared less about dying when you're like, yeah, you know, no if I had to sit through a th like a 30 to 60 second loading screen, like back in the day, I'd be like, fuck, I died. I really don't want to mm -hmm. die again. Let's be, let's really focus up now. Yeah. But now I'm just like, oh, I'll just try this thing yeah. and then die and yeah. pull my yeah. straight back. Yeah. So that it's funny, like, the technology actually kind of hurts Hinders survival it. horror in a yeah. weird way because yeah. it makes you less afraid of death. C completing it was a bit of a nightmare for me just because the chapter, there's no chapter select. Yeah. Which like not that every game needs that, but you get to the end of the road and you have a trophy or an achievement that's yeah. hey, be sure to collect every single one of these items and you weren't really paying and attention. You got one missing. Yeah, or in my case, like it wasn't missing, it just didn't spawn. Or oh. like it yeah. I died and so I lost it. And yeah. so I mean those are obviously like day one issues that I'm sure yeah. my video is immediately outdated because they've probably already fixed most of those things. But sure. it definitely like hinders my relationship with the game because mm -hmm. i gave it so much blood sweat and tears mm -hmm. and then now it's a different product and yeah. shout outs to greg miller for skipping the whole hard mode discussion <laughs> that was really frustrating <laughs> yeah apparently yeah. If honestly you just... when i saw when i saw yeah. greg's tweet i was like i'm just not gonna send it to gerard <laughs> oh i i was i was streaming and someone was like gerard look at this and i i melted down on stream no. and i put it in my video because after the fact i was like yeah. you know what mm -hmm. That was a genuine reaction. So. I think it's funny. <laughs> the other thing is, people are like really excited about the world, and I'm like, every, what world, every audio world. log you pick up is exactly the same. Dude, I have nothing dude. to say. As soon as I was on that ship and I saw it was the USJ Karen, I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. Jacob, son of Isaac. I, yeah, Jacob, son well. of Isaac. Just, yeah, yeah, that is a thing. I, I, he didn't need to talk. Callisto I, Protocol, unfortunately. Not great, but look as I said, a lot of people do actually really like it. Yeah. Like it's out there. Like I mean, it. on Steam, I think it's sitting around sixty percent, maybe. I think they've patched. The yeah, they have. They fixed a lot of the issues. Yeah. They I uploaded have the of... wrong file or something. Yeah, I have. Yeah, the whole crunch discussion as well is oh, another yeah. thing where it's like more power to you if you like it. I more power to you if you like it. I will sure. buy the second one. Like I want to see where they I can hope, improve. Yeah. I, I want the second one to be like, hey, we learned, sure. and here we are. Yeah. And if they can do that, great. Mm -hmm. Sure. Shall we talk about then our highlights of the year? Mm, so sure. we've got like what twenty minutes? We're going for time. Thirty yeah, minutes. Thirty yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Ahead of time. All right. We're doing good. Wait, look at us on time. For once. Oh. For once. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, we started this podcast, by the way, we had a goal of like we want to keep every episode to like ninety minutes. <laughs> I don't. We, the shortest episode we've ever done is like two hours. So yeah. Like, Congratulations, we've Jeff Keely. I saw like yeah. Yeah, every right. time. Every time I see a comment and in every video, it's like, can you make these longer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Like, How much longer do you want? <laughs> like it's already three hours. Yeah. So uh, that's called a conversation. Yeah. To find someone and talk to them. <laughs> talk to us. I uh, I mean, uh, this year has been a very strange one. I don't know where to start with. What have your highlights been? I mean, I, I can go first if you want. Yeah. Just games that I really yeah, loved. Yeah. Um, Drinkbox Studios. Nobody saves the world. Yeah. Phenomenal game. Great game. It was it, what a great way to start the year. Oh, yeah. It was uh, a surprise to me that how much I fell in love with that game and. It's a pleasure to complete and a pleasure to play multiplayer with friends. Mm -hmm. And it gave me that, it satiated my my Diablo dungeon crawling without yeah. over bloating it. Sure. And mm -hmm. very funny and weird weird character yeah. classes. Great like, music. Great music. Mm -hmm. From start to finish, I've, I was playing a Saturday morning cartoon yeah. that I think about fairly often this year. It was yeah. a good time. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. a highlight. I really enjoyed that one. That's the thing. I am... Um... I'm trying not to say Vampire Survivors because I think that is probably. <laughs> a I feel game. like we we, we're we all can just around it, it is assumed Vampire Survivors. Yeah. We know. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, I think one of my gaming highlights from this year was playing Plague Tale for the first time. Oh, okay. Because mm, I missed it when it first came out, and I just I I've missed that kind of like double A game with mm. a really good story. Like we said earlier, amazing performances, and I just really enjoyed it. And I 
I'm morbidly curious about the Black Plague sure, and all that, course. and the Black Death and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, just the way that the rats are implemented, the, yeah. the family kind of story at the heart of it all. An evil, um, what do you want to call it? Not like Illuminati, but the... Uh, Inquisition? Inquisition-y sure. boys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shit. Yeah, the church. The evil, we're seeing the, the church. church doing evil shit. I'm, I'm always down for that. I, oh, was, 20, I, was, I was raised a Catholic, so casting yeah, the Catholic yeah, yeah. Church as the enemy, I'm always down for that. Well, it's like 2022, <laughs> so. the year of the year of the church. Uh, Pentiment, <laughs> Plague right. Tale, Requiem. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, but no, so I, yeah, I really enjoyed playing that this year. I will say I fell off my ongoing games. Overwatch. Yeah. Really? You fell I, off Overwatch? I fell off Overwatch. But Even one when of the sequel came out, that's one hell of a time to I drop know. off it. Well, we, it came out in the midst of us doing it, like loads of we stuff. We were in Montreal. Yeah, think, we, yeah. Um, but I will say one of my absolute favorite days gaming was when the old Overwatch crew, so yeah. myself, Tam, uh, Simon, Joe, Krupa, some current former IGN folks, and then Gary, um, mm. we just got together and played like crap load of Overwatch. It's like, and this was the day of the Overwatch 1 servers and it was weirdly emotional. Yeah, really sure, nice. I can understand. And yeah. then, yeah, Overwatch 2, gotta find someone to kick. Hmm. Who did you kick? Yourself. 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 Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, you kicked Maybe yourself. Maybe that's yeah. why you're not playing because they actually kicked you. Yeah, yeah. did Sorry. you guys get another group chat? Uh, Stop getting the messages Anyone on, on the Discord. RSS feed, he uh, just did side eyes, okay? Uh, Serious side eyes. He did, he yeah. did the, the white people. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah, my, my highlight is Steam Deck, I think. Yeah. That was Steam Deck was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I think Incredible. that has been... I think a lot of people are going to be talking about it or already talking about it in a major way, but like I think Valve finally, like, they finally cracked it. it with something a, a piece of hardware that feels like a genuine step forward mm -hmm. that is also true to themselves. And weirdly, I think the fascinating thing about it is they took a lot of risks with hardware iterations up until this point, like the um, Steam controller, the Steam, what, what's that Link. thing? Link. Steam mm. Link. Those failures or whatever you want to call them, those experimentations needed to happen mm. to get them to where mm. they That's were, good. which is Steam Deck. Like the controllers, like the touchpad stuff, that mm. is an iteration of the controller mm. and like the whole thing where you can stream a game from Steam on a on a desktop to your Steam Deck if you want to and that kind of stuff yeah. and connecting it. It's like very, very, it's a, it's a big moment for them and for them to make what is effectively a new gaming piece of hardware is kind of a big deal. No one enters the console or, or, the, or the hardware market in a meaningful way anymore. The big three have that locked up. The last like major company to do that was Sega and that was many many years ago since then we've had like a lot of also runs that last maybe 10 minutes like you know Ooh, yeah. the on lives mm. and ooh years and that kind of stuff so Valve's been able to really enter that market and not only enter it but like turn it upside down like very very counterproduct not counterproduct counter um, programming happening here mm. and like turning the idea that they are console gamers and there are PC gamers and there are portable gamers and completely blurring the line mm. between them. Mm. Yeah. I know multiple people on the GameSpot staff that only play console, never had PC games that now play on their Steam Deck. And mm -hmm. they're like, I can review PC games now, mm -hmm. yeah. which is so empowering, but also it's a piece of hardware that until now, you know, indie games were home on switch or nintendo's devices yes and they also worked on consoles but you know you always wanted a portable version of it they created a device that works for both triple a double a indie and also emulators, emulators. <laughs> it's yeah. like and like that's allegedly a leg yeah. Wouldn't allegedly. Wouldn't know. allegedly yeah it's uh, who knows whether you can click one button and have every emulator <laughs> along with roms and all the artwork on it no one can say no one can no. Say. But no crimes no crimes i've never committed a crime um but the fact that they've been able to create a piece of hardware that allows all those to exist in one spot and make it as accessible as it is especially now that it's easily available they're so available they're giving away one minute at a time if you're watching a stream <laughs> it's maybe like, chris judge is yeah, on the take yeah. you know it's like a monumental achievement from them. And I'm just hoping that Gabe has more knives out of this. Like, mm -hmm. he's, he's just like, I'm going to buy a million knives now. I'm good. What? You, you don't his know knife the Gabe? 
He's into knives. Gabe, Gabe oh, is yeah. insanely. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Knife. I never knew he was into knives. He also lives in Australia. I think he lives in New Zealand. New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, well, actually, I think he might have moved think back. He I think he like yeah, he stayed maybe. there for the thing a bit. I think That's his might... knife collection. Wow, yeah. that is wild. Look at him. <laughs> That's such a funny photo of him holding up two knives. Yeah. What the hell? The he loves yeah. knives. Apologies if you can't see this, Sorry. but uh, we're just looking at. If you Google Gabe knife collection, you will find some truly disturbing pictures of him just staring blankly into the camera, holding Hold up knives. two knives. <laughs> like this yeah i hope that um, he's got all the live knives very cool. but yeah like the steam deck is an inc- incredible piece of engineering yeah, totally. and design and you had was it lawrence on here oh, a little while yeah. back yep. and like mm-hmm. the stuff that he and his team and everyone at valve have done to kind of homogenize all these disparate kind of initiatives yes. into one thing is like it's quite special it's truly incredible mm. yeah, yeah yeah no I, I totally agree i think that's definitely my because I don't plan to do a game of the year thing this year. I plan to just do like a thing of the year because I think mm-hmm. there's a whole bunch of stuff that interests me. Like, And I think Steam Deck is super high on that list just because I think it's so transformative. I only touch my Switch now for um, console exclusives mm-hmm. um, and all the indie stuff that I used to do on the Switch, it's on deck, emulation on deck. Mm-hmm. Like I, I now fold it into my review process when I'm reviewing games because I know people are picking it up now and it's mm-hmm. their primary PC. So I want to make sure people know, can this run mm-hmm. on a Steam Deck? So I work that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think the future of that device is is so, is just incredible. So yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, the other thing outside of that for me was um, I really have to shout out like adaptations this year. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously Arcane is mm-hmm. number one, which was last year technically, but it, it wasn't last year. I think it missed the review. The cutoff. Yeah. Cutoff. Yeah, That's sure. why it's eligible this year. So I, I know I watched it late. I'm not actually sure if I watched it in December or whatever this year, but extraordinary, like unbelievable every fucking frame of that you're like how did you people do this mm-hmm. have you guys all seen it by the way no okay. I, 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 I've, I've seen, seen it a Christmas. few episodes okay, but not yeah. the whole thing cool. yeah I've seen it and, I, and I'm someone like I'm I was a League fan back in the day I like that universe but mm-hmm. I'm like a diehard fan whatever but um but the whole package incredible and then obviously to follow that up with Edge Runners um, <gasps> and shout oh, out sure. to Ruffle you know if you're <sighs> watching I'm yeah. so bummed I couldn't make the interview man yeah, it was man. such Aww. a good it's such a good chat it was just awesome great so, show yeah I love that and um, the work that he did with his team and obviously um, studio Trigger? Trigger. 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 Um, amazing. Just so mm-hmm. good. And it's good to see video game annotations because obviously we've had The Witcher lately. Mm-hmm. Like that was a few years ago. We've started that. Great. Fantastic. We're obviously going to have the HBO show for Last of Us. Cool. But it's just... And we're going to have Sonic? a Mario movie. Sonic, of course. So it's nice to see video game adaptations getting momentum like this. Mm. But and I think good. Yeah. Those two in particular, though, I think Arcane and Edge Runners really stood out to me as... Yeah, they set the bar. They mm-hmm. they went beyond... Because like, they went beyond what their their influence, their um their inspiration was. You know, Because obviously Sonic is like, hey, Sonic is so cute, isn't he? Let's have some fun adventures as Sonic. Mm-hmm. And The Witcher is an adaptation of the book. And Henry Cavill did a great job. But I really think that uh, you like you just have such a bigger, deeper connection to those universes as a result of Arcane and Edge Runners, and the storytelling in Edge Runners just far surpassed, I think, anything that we saw in, in Cyberpunk. And in Cyberpunk had some great storytelling, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was they were they were really big highlights. And it helped year. Cyberpunk. Yep. Big it time. Did. Huge yeah. it's redemption and arc. And then put was... in DLC yep. that relates to the show. They yeah. Sh- they, sh- they showed off the trailer for uh, oh, yeah. the Cyberpunk jo- DLC. With Johnny Silverhand with Keanu. He's back. Hell yeah. yeah. And Idris, Idris, Idris Elba. Elba. How good is yeah. that? It's he great. actually tweeted out like the she greatest. loves Idris Elba. Well, I mean, I don't blame you. So, yeah. wait, you don't love Idris Elba? Is what's that called? That's called the white people thin lips. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say something no, bad about no, Idris no. Elba on the internet? Are you really about to no, do that? I think do you want to he... borrow my mic? <laughs> you want to borrow all of our mics? There's a lot of thin lips right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think he's really good in certain roles, but the roles where he phones it in, uh, he's unwatchable. Like what? Fucking Jungle Book. Uh, the Star She's Trek right. he was She's in. Right. <laughs> Um, I can't as much as Dark Tower. Yeah, as, as much as I have to defend my Maybe fellow East Londoners. Yeah, but that's the thing. But like, when he's good, he's incredible. Yeah, but okay. when he phones it in, it's <laughs> let's not forget he was in Cats. <laughs> well, that was a low moment for oh, a lot of people. Look, so. Sometimes <laughs> people need to buy things for their kids. Sometimes <laughs> they need to buy a third house. He used to say. So um, yeah, no, it's it's nice to see video game adaptations just get such momentum and do so well. Yeah. So yeah, that was that's kind of my biggest like highlight that. for the year yeah. or one of them yeah so also i think just being more stuff back in person yeah yeah really totally like. agree T- totally agree different kind of energy 
You know? What are you guys looking forward to most next year? What's like your number one? Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. Dude, I don't know why that game has such a hold on me. No, I'm not even... You don't even that... play 14 though. Yeah. Because I, I played 14 back in the day and Yoshi P and like this guy knows what he's doing and mm-hmm. he's obviously not the only one. It's a team, but hmm. like seeing what oh god yes. seeing the reactions to him doing a video blog or whatever when he's like oh you know here's an update or we're very sorry yeah. we messed this up and the way that mm. the community reacts to him is incredible sure. so i'm like you know michael hyam who we used to work with who's over at fanbyte link shell he i trust michael right and so i trust yeah. yoshi p also it's like for a lot of fans like they're finally giving one of the coolest parts of that franchise the attention it deserves mm. the, which is the summons the espers aeons whatever you want to call sure. them like and they've always been the thing that as the franchise has grown to become more and more like bigger and more ambitious mm. a lot of the stuff around the summons has still been left to the imagination mm. like uh, they're a mechanic for they're mechanics mechanic sake for a mechanic sake and for a but, narrative but, drive yeah in your in your mind you always felt like there was something way more you had to fill that in like when you summoned ifrit or knights of the round you were like creating a lot of the story in your own mind and it always felt like a massive missed opportunity to not do something more with it you should play and final fantasy 14 i know i know, I, know. <laughs> I, I played and that's why that's i was good. like that's what i was going to where it's like and the fact that they've made such a big deal of that in the MMO mm. has been incredible. But now that they're bringing it back to yeah. a, a, a place where, let's be honest, like MMOs are popular, but like they're not as accessible as no. a straight up like start mm. to finish console or PC Final Fantasy experience mm. and building off the bones of the last mainline entry um, to, to realize that is like super exciting. Because since I was a kid, I wanted to know like, what do these f- summons mean, man? Like, mm. what is it? What, what more to them? And I don't have the heart to like play through a Realm Reborn yet again. So, sure. because oh, um, I've like had a rough time with that with it's like account stuff. Very un- oh, um, the account stuff and that stuff is a nightmare. Terrible. Yeah. It's yeah. so like, bad. So, like the, when they announced this, I was like, oh, this is this allows. Oh, it's, it's the chair. It's okay. the chair. It's the chair. Everyone it's been the chair down. all day, every day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So that, that now that we've got an opportunity to like actually make good on some of that stuff and it's the team that has already done it once yeah mm-hmm. that's very exciting i agree mm-hmm. totally agree yeah all right we don't have much time left so but 16 is mine what's your thing for 2023 what's your 2023 gaming it resolution? was final fantasy oh yeah nice. it's it not was armored final core fantasy. i mean like it is armored core is the one that is like i, I don't know enough about armored sure. core to be mm-hmm. like i'm excited about it. i'm excited for literally anything from software does yeah. sure but like i don't yeah mm-hmm. uh this is more oh, wait, no sorry three five I mean, I feel like everyone who knows me knows I'm going to be all in on Street Fighter and Final mm-hmm. Fantasy. The thing that I am personally most excited for is the fact that I am officially entering the game development realm with producing. Mm-hmm. So I've got three games in production. Um, I announced uh, a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago I'm producing Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, which is like mm-hmm. a Metroidvania steampunk game. Uh, Renane, which is like a, a beautiful pixel 2D platformer, hack and slash kind of game. Uh, and Elsie, which is a Mega Man X roguelike, and uh, it's those are I just the fact that I get to say that you know, hey, I'm I'm producing these mm-hmm. and learning how to design and develop games and giving great feedback and working with actors and performers, like it's to me that's what I'm just most excited about is to be like I'm gonna f- jump into game dev and and see how that pans out that's and cool. yeah, it's just really it's really personally like fulfilling thing that I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to because I can help make the, these teams do their job and mm. then people can just play the thing that I helped to make. So sure. that's super exciting to me. Yeah, I love it. Love yeah. It. Look forward to playing Yeah, them. yeah, I can't wait. Thank you. I hope you guys don't feel the need to review them. I would not review yeah, them. Yeah, it's not about that. I don't review But even with that, it's not about not, that yeah, though. Sure. It's like, I, I would it's I would never be like, hey, what'd you think? Like, yeah, it's just yeah. like, have fun I, with them. Have fun with them. Yeah, Yeah, because that's, that's the most important thing is have fun. Sure. Yeah. Great, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously Zelda, cool. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, that one would be great. Um, sounds really pathetic, but Destiny Two Lightfall. I'm extremely excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> extremely excited. Oh, crackhead um, wants more crack. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. What a surprise. Um, but uh, I think I I actually would say Final Fantasy 16 as well. Mm. I mean, I I've always loved that series mm-hmm. ever since seven. And because uh, that's when I came in on it, and um, and obviously fourteen also means a lot to me, even though I'm not playing it right now, mm-hmm. and it just looks fantastic. So you know, especially with fifteen being a bit sort of how's it going, had a few problems. Great until like chapter 
13. Well, well no, no great in like the open world yeah, kind of stuff. And then as soon as it started that's to... That's a whole other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, a five-year yeah. late 15 spoiler that's right, cast. That's right. But um, I just think as well, the idea that the series is kind of growing up, I really mm. like when games are doing that now because yeah. we're all getting older, the series is getting older, and it's it, like as in these franchises are getting older, but they're not growing up. And mm. I like the fact that this one is clearly trying to do that. It's trying to be more mature, more confronting, mm. um, embrace darker themes. That's also funnily enough something Diablo 4 is doing. Mm-hmm. And I played through the beta of that recently. And um, same sort of deal. Like, it's just much darker and much grittier. Um, so, yeah. So, 16, man. That's mm-hmm. that's where my, that's what I'm looking at right now. No one said Starfield. No one's feeling Starfield? Oh, I am. I feel yeah. like, I, I feel, it feels like everyone's talking about Starfield. Sure, so, sure. like, yeah. yeah, we want to shine like a little indie game called Final <laughs> Fantasy 16. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's also like a, like not to, I, I love those games, but like you, we've learned to temper our expectations yes. when it comes to yeah. like ambition, expectation, and mm. promises. And uh, Starfield is one where they they they're talking a bigger game than ever before, mm, and we have to kind of reconcile what we know they say versus what we know they deliver. Agreed. And they deliver amazing games, but we gotta keep the expectation in check. Mm. Sure. Yeah, that's how I'm with it. Yeah. Wow, boys! Last show of 2022. Well. It's been a wild ride. Yeah. Number 13. Number 13. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Mm, lucky well, 13. before we go, normally we would go around and celebrate this this week this in gaming. Game. This Fortnite yeah, in gaming. It? No, because well, we, it's, been, I, it's been crazy. So instead, I figured, why don't we just say, not your game of the year, mm-hmm. not like the best one, but like, what's the one that stuck with you mm. and why? Okay. Hmm. Oh, man. Elden, Elden Ring. Okay. Elden Ring? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I would I would actually say God of War, even though I I mm-hmm. do, just because that thirty five hours was just so special for a number mm-hmm. of reasons, personally, professionally, emotionally, just a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. I have that connection to that franchise, and just being able to play through it like that, I think, was really special. So yeah, mm. oh, I mean, both of those. I think Elden Ring was special for me in a lot of ways um i just really enjoyed it felt like a really fun invigorating time to be in interested in games working in games uh media it was huge it was one of those games where you'd come to work every day and be like did you see this did you do this like mm-hmm. texting friends all the time and i um loved every minute even when i was getting my ass kicked sure of course Trad. It's gotta be God of War Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think about it every day I wake up. It's been <laughs> it's been on my brain. Sure. I have an hour and twenty minute video coming out next week. So if you mm-hmm. wanna join me on that deep di- deep dive you can. But uh yeah, it's just the characters, the relationships, it's just mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. Just it's it's the bow that was the perfect way to end of the year. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, thank you all, everyone who's been watching and listening throughout the year. It means the world to us. Yes. And uh, we can't wait to show you what we've got in store for 2023. We're mm-hmm. going to take a break for a bit. We haven't actually yeah. Oh, confirmed yeah. the dates. Oh, probably first or second week of January. No, I think it'd be a bit later because I'm oh, going to yeah. take some more time. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, so, like, so probably more like February. I think oh. realistically, yeah. like last week of Jan to Feb is probably when we'll kick off again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to that. It's yeah. We're actually going to have like a big meeting now to talk yeah. about stuff. Yeah. And that's kind Plans of exciting. Stuff. Um, but it's been a really wonderful year. Great. And I thank you guys. Really, really been awesome to hang out mm-hmm. with you all. And yeah. Thank you, Jake. Thing. Jake, thank you. Thank you, Jake. Editor. Tam, you've stepped in at crucial moments and you've always delivered. And the comment section absolutely loves you. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, thank you to yeah. Jake Baldino. Yes. yes. Love you, mate. So devastated he's not here. So. And, and remember, everyone, please, for the love of God, tie your shoes and go to goddamn bed. Did you just add some cussing to it? I did. did. I did. That, for the I don't end know of the if year. Jake would be okay with that, to be he, honest. He, with he, he likes to add Yeah. He can't fight now. So sorry, sorry, Jake.